Columbia. A look at the Big 12 South standing. Oklahoma State and Texas A&M tied at four and two. Texas Tech with only two losses in conference play. And good evening, everybody. I'm Drew Goodman. It is a beautiful night for football, but we begin with tumultuous times in Austin and Lubbock. This week in Lubbock, Texas, 18 allegations against their athletic department for wrongdoing. They answered it by removing themselves from any postseason prospects or considerations which would include the Big 12 championship game. Now in Austin, the Heat has really turned up a couple of notches on John Makovic, particularly after last week's loss to Baylor, 23-21. But we have a football game to be played. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. And on display tonight, one of the finest running backs in the country in recent times, Ricky Williams, who could join elite company tonight. He's going for five consecutive 200-yard games. It's only been done twice before, and I think you know the guys. Marcus Allen from Southern Cal in 81, and in 1988, Barry Sanders from Oklahoma State was over 200 yards five straight times. They call Ricky Williams Little Earl after Big Earl, Earl Campbell, who captured the Heisman Trophy in 1977 here at Texas. We bring in Artie Gigantino. Artie, I would vote right now for Ricky Williams for the Heisman Trophy. So would I. He's got my vote. This guy is the most complete back in the United States. He not only runs the football well, he blocks, he catches passes, and last week he even threw a touchdown pass. But the most impressive thing about him is his ability to break tackles and continue to run. This guy is a super player. He's an amazing player and a tough assignment for the Texas Tech defense tonight. It is a very good defense led by Monte Rager. He's a defensive end, yet he's third on the team in tackles. That's amazing. Yeah, he's an athlete, and he typifies what this Red Raider defense is. Here last week, he gets knocked down against Kansas State, gets up, and intercepts a pass. He plays with a great passion like the rest of his teammates. That's going to be a battle tonight for Ricky Williams to try to penetrate this defense. Here he rushes the passer and forces the quarterback into the end zone and ends up getting a safety for his defense. This guy is an athlete, and he plays full speed all the time. He'll need to tonight against Ricky Williams. This one should be a fun matchup. Last year, they produced 70 points. The Red Raiders and the Longhorns. Come on back to Austin with us. Big 12 football is brought to you locally by Sitco and by McCoy's. tonight's game three and five the Texas Tech Raiders are five and three and you look at Bevo who has his game face on already we check in with the third member of our crew Greg Bell well the stage is set tonight as it was one year ago for what could be the Big 12's most exciting in-state matchup a sellout crowd on hand as Texas Tech and Texas set a Jones Stadium record for total offense on the Longhorns' first possession, Sean Mitchell raced 65 yards to set the tone for the evening. Late in the first half, Texas led 28-3 until Texas Tech's Debbie Leverage finds Donnie Hart for the 86-yard touchdown. Late in the third quarter, Texas led 35-18, but Leverage scampers 39 yards. Tech pulls to within 10 points. Now with five minutes to go, Lethbridge finds Hart again, this time for a 32-yard score. Texas, though, would answer as Bill Dawson nails the 53-yard field goal. Texas leads 38-32. But Texas had one more chance to score. Chevy, he's got pressure, and he gets it toward the end zone, and it's knocked down. Texas wins in Lubbock. Wow. Well, with 1,183 yards a year ago, if that's any indication of what could happen tonight, it'll be a great shootout here in Austin. All right, Greg, thank you very much. A perfect night for football. Temperature in the upper 60s, a slight breeze, and the forecast to remain clear. One of the great settings for college football in the country, Darrell K. Royal Stadium in Austin. Texas Tech won the toss. 
they deferred, and they'll kick it deep. Hodges Mitchell, seven yards deep in the end zone, puts the knee down. The starting quarterback for Texas, James Brown, and he's been the starter for three and a half years. He has 24 wins under his belt against just 11 losses. However, he has struggled at times this year, Artie. Yeah, and one of the problems that James is having, he tries too hard sometimes. He wants to make the perfect play, and the coaches are really working with him to try to relax. He's had a great week of practice. In fact, on Thursday, when I was at practice, I thought he was just throwing the lights out of the ball. We'll see what happens tonight. Offset eye, now split back. Number 11, of course, is Ricky Williams. Movement up front, Rager may have jumped, and Williams gets just a couple of yards, but a flag is down. We well, take a look at the Southwest Airlines backs and receivers for Texas. Kwame Cavill is a freshman, and he came as a linebacker. He had five catches over the last couple of ball games. Their wideout crew has been decimated by injuries. The offensive line has done a very good job, obviously, this year, led by Ryan Feebigger in the middle, his 35th consecutive start. Five-yard penalty, and it remains first down. For Andy Crystal, our referee tonight. And it'll be first and five after the walk-off for James Brown and the Longhorns. Well, it's a good waste down now because you've got a little bit more time with three downs to gain only five yards. Look for Texas maybe to throw the ball here. Cincinnati knocked off Louisville in a game many of you saw, 28-9. to nine. tight end Steve Bradley just his fifth catch of the year tackled by Ty Ardwick let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines defensive starters for the Red Raiders up front a four-man front there's Rager we talked a lot about him eight and a half sacks coming in McGuire a good hard worker and the linebackers led by the man in the middle, 260-pound Eric Butler. The secondary is good. Darden, the best cover man. Dane Johnson, a very good free safety. Williams. And Ricky Williams broke one tackle, and then he ran into Dwayne Price, a 185-pound senior from College Station, Texas, who was not recruited by Texas A&M. No, and there you saw the speed of this Red Raider defense, because if they can chase this guy down going left to right or east to west, you know that's a fast defense. And that is one of the qualities that they have. But this guy right here is going to challenge him tonight. Because as we talked about, he, to me, is the most complete back in the United States right now. He runs, he blocks, he catches, and last week we learned he throws passes. And he's also a student of the game. High formation, second and ten. Blitz coming on the corner. Brown's in trouble. Brown is sacked. That is the Texas Tech Red Raider defense personified. They'll come from all different angles. Well, that was Ardwin. And one of the problems you have when you run a play-action pass is you're susceptible to the blitz, and they time it perfectly. It's a play-action pass, but Ardwin comes off the corner. The quarterback has no chance to complete that because a play-action pass takes a long time. Good call that time by Spike Dykes and his defensive coaches. A loss of nine on the sack by Ardwan. No score just underway in Austin. They need the 44-yard line. And this one's being blown dead. There was enough time on the play clock. Might have been a false start. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Remains third down. What you're gonna see now, there's gonna be a false start over here. Again, there's a little bit of nerve. He moves a little bit. The big man, Octavius Bishop, gets called for it. What ta what's got to happen here now is they've got to settle down and just go play the game. Now it is third and 24 for James Brown. He'll operate out of the gun. Blitz coming again. Brown breaks containment. This is where he's dangerous. And he'll be run out of bounds, but 10 yards short of where he needed to get. 
It's a pickup of 14. Punting situation for the Longhorns. Eric Butler forced him out. Okay, you're going to see a blitz now come. One thing that Spike Dykes wants to do on the top here is going to bring a couple of guys off the corner. It's a zone blitz because you see defensive linemen drop in the cover. James Brown made the correct move by scrambling and trying to get the first down. He's got to run for positive yardage tonight for this Texas offense to be successful. Mark Schultz, the senior punter from Sherman, Texas. Dane Johnson, who in fact in his own 22, has returned two this year for touchdowns four in his career. He'll get a chance here from the 24. And Johnson picks up a few after the 43-yard punt. Quentin Wallace made the tackle on the coverage unit for the University of Texas. The Red Raiders have a veteran quarterback as well. His name is Zebby Lethridge, and he too has started for the better part of four years, but he's a little gimpy. He's had a bad ankle for a few weeks, and quite honestly, he doesn't have the mobility that he normally does, and they're limited what they can do with him now. Yeah, because in four games this year, in fact, four out of the last five, he has been negative in his rushing yard, so that is really a big part of this offense that they're missing. And they hand the football off to the other Ricky Williams in this game, and Ricky is stopped after a very short game by Anthony Hicks. Let's check the Southwest Airlines starters offensively for the Red Raiders. Ricky Williams, he's a freshman, no relation to the other Ricky Williams for Texas, and he has done a nice job in his rookie campaign. Big offensive line, Jonathan Gray is 6'5", 363, he's known as the house. Now, Jerry Gray was an All-American defensive back at Texas, so I guess he comes from the thinner part of the family. Here's an option look, Lethridge tucks it up and gets it to the 40-yard line which will set up a third down and seven defensively and even front as well for the Longhorns. They have been decimated by injuries on the defensive line. Cedric Woodard has been playing good football. Dusty Renfro in the middle is the leading tackler for Texas and the secondary, great secondary a year ago. They all left three in the NFL, so a very young group. Donald McCowan's a terrific athlete, but he's inexperienced. The redshirt freshman from Dallas. 37, Zebby on the out cut, incomplete as he tried to get it to D. Jackson. It's imperative tonight for the Texas defense that they start off well and have some success. This defense has been much maligned. A lot of criticism has gone on John Makovic and his defensive coaches about the way they have played defense. But this is a confidence booster for them tonight to stop Texas Tech on the first series. Jeremy. The punter is Jeremy Hernandez, and you will see two punters in all probability for Texas Tech tonight. Brian Roberson also punts. They just alternate. Hodges Mitchell back at his own 15, trying to get to the wall. And he is filled at the 23-yard line after a 44-yard punt. We're back in a moment. Time for a Dr. Pepper game break. Game of the year in Columbia, Missouri. Missouri pushes Nebraska to the brink before the Huskers smother the Tigers' chances in overtime. 45-38. Huskers are still perfect, but they escape by the hair of their chinny chin chin. Meanwhile, Michigan whipped Penn State in Happy Valley. Artie, how high could Michigan move up? Well, they can move up a long way, but I still think Nebraska is the number one team in the country because they didn't lose. Missouri had a gallon effort today, but Nebraska did not lose. Nebraska now 9-0. Kansas State, they are 8-1 after winning today. Their lone defeat came in Lincoln. Game we did earlier this year. Nebraska really handled Kansas State, but Kansas State has handled everybody else they've played this year. Yeah, that's the team to me that's amazing because they just keep reloading. And he's done a wonderful job. James Brown on a roll. Now he's going to run. No, he's not. He is sacked. Diving in there is Torres Rucker, the other defensive end. He's a sophomore from Denison, Texas. And, and he's got a great nickname. They call him Dump Truck Rucker Boy. And I'll tell you, he is a good football player. And he gets a lot of the action because he's away from the All-American. He gets knocked down, but he gets up and makes the play. That's a wonderful play that time by the big guy, number 89. Six foot, 260 pounds, 251. Second sack for the Red Raiders. 
Just a second possession for Longhorn. Williams on a sweep. And he packs a punch as he runs over Dane Johnson, and a flag comes in in the backfield of Texas. You know, he's a horse to bring down. We talked about his size. He is six foot. He is 220, but he looks about 230 to me. And he can run over tacklers, but if you do tackle him, he really punishes you. The defense from Texas Tech will be sore tomorrow morning. Well, somebody helped Ricky out. And the hold against Texas will push him back even further. So the Longhorns not off to a good start offensively. And most of their problems this year, and the reason they're three and five, have been on the defensive side of the ball, though they've turned it over quite a bit on offense. Holding on the offense. It'll be half distance. Replay second down. Well, they've had 28 turnovers, but they've had poor timing on their penalties. Penalties are part of football, but it's when they happen is that what stops offensive drives. And one of the things Texas has got to do tonight, they can't stop themselves. They've got to continue to drive by not turning the football over and not committing penalties. Second and 26, they run a delay. And Williams tackled from behind, nearly lost the football. Rager saying he has it. Let's see if the officials agree. They do not. Well, that's the correct call that time by the officials because the ball was down and the play was over. Rager is an outstanding athlete that Texas tried to recruit and didn't get him. He wanted to go to Texas Tech because he's from there. You're going to see him walk up the field here, get his hands on the blocker, come off, shed the blocker inside, come outside, and tackle Ricky Williams. That was a great play that time by the defensive end. I'm not so sure that he didn't end up with a football. Ah, good call by the official. Third, 24, late pass, good strike. Well short of a first down to Brian White at the 20-yard line. All that will do is give Schultz a little more room to punt the football. That that shows you the arm strength at times of James Brown. He just rocketed that football and had people around him. That was a good throw that time and obviously a good catch, but he rockets the football, and this guy has an underrated arm. So Schultes will kick it deep to Dane Johnson, and Texas Tech should get good field position. No score, 8.30 to go in the first quarter. One of the up backs for Texas Tech. It did not. And it's killed around the 40 yard line. No score in Austin. Texas Tech trying to snap a three game losing streak to the Longhorn. Drew Goodman, Artie Gigantino, Greg Bell from Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. Earlier in the week, Texas Tech, because of 18 alleged wrongdoings in the athletic department most notably in the football program and the men's basketball program remove themselves from any postseason consideration for this year well i think it's the right thing to do because what you do you reestablish credibility with the nc2a so when they look to make a judgment on you at least you've got some credibility and it off to ricky williams and the diminutive back Darts in for a couple of yards. Spike Dykes talked earlier about the situation in Lubbock. I think probably what you have to do is be honest with them and, and lay it on the line, tell them everything you know about the situation, just exactly where you are, what's going on, the best of your knowledge, and, and uh, what the possibilities are. Thank goodness, I think this will all be resolved by the time the recruiting season starts this year. And, and last year, uh, last year we laid it out to the guys, and you know we got a good recruiting class because they believed in what we were doing. They loved our school, and they, you know, they enjoyed uh, their visit. And uh, but also, it's it's hard to overcome because a lot of people, uh, like you do in selling or anything else, a lot of people negatively against you when they do that. Well, it's tough. Spike Dykes, who always stays upbeat. Said when he first took the job at Texas Tech, he said, don't give me a contract, I'll work day to day. This is the greatest job in the world. Third down and four. Lethridge in trouble. And he will be stopped after a yard gain. Dusty Renfro trapped him. And Texas.
defenses stayed in their pass rush lanes. Yes, they did, and Dusty Renfro was the emotional leader of this Texas defense, and this place right now, this stadium, is responding to this defense, and it's led by that guy. He makes the checks at the line of scrimmage. He is the coach and the captain on the field for the Longhorn defense. So another punt. This time it is Brian Roberson, the sophomore from Richardson, Texas. His numbers on the year. He's six punts less than Jeremy Hernandez. And this is a low-line drive effort, and it's going to get out of bounds inside the 10-yard line, so it works quite nicely. Out of bounds at the 9. No score. 6.18 to go in the first quarter in Austin. Texas Tech has had it twice. The Longhorns have had it twice. Still no score. Next week on College Football Saturday, the Houston Cougars battle Red Hot Southern Miss. Plus the Texas A&M Aggies will visit Norman to face Oklahoma. And of course, every night after football, Fox Sports News tonight. Check your local listings after the game. You know, uh, Drew, going back to the sanctions or alleged sanctions against uh, Texas Tech, the problem is it doesn't hurt this football team, but what it does down the road, you know, the young men that are freshmen now and are going to be freshmen next year, they end up paying the price. So this football team from Texas Tech will suffer the effects in the year 2000 or 2001. And believe me, because at Southern Cal, we were put on probation when I was there and it had nothing to do with the players that were in the program. And it's no fun to go through. As Spike Dykes was saying earlier, it isn't fair to the players that are here now. He said, go out and play football because you love it, because you enjoy it. That's why you always play. Quick out cut, and it's complete to Tommy Cavill, and he breaks a tackle. To the 39-yard line, the true freshman from Waco, Texas. Finally brought down by Darwin Brown. This is a three-step drop that time. Brown's going to drop back three steps, throw a hitch pattern out to Gaville. Now, Gaville is six foot two. He's 200 pounds. He's a hard guy to tackle, but he's a great athlete. He can vertical jump 38 inches. This guy is a perfect example of run after catch. Here's the counter, Ricky Williams, his favorite play. He breaks the tackle short of and launches ahead for about 11 yards, and we have another flag down. You know, Drew, that man might end up being a face mask on that because it looked like one of the defenders from Texas Tech reached in and grabbed his face mask. Artie, we should put a zebra outfit on you. Well, here's what happens when you're trying to tackle a big guy like Ricky. You go up high sometimes because otherwise he's going to run you right over. And that's exactly what happened there. Johnson tried to tackle him high, and as he tackled Face him mask high... on the defense. Penalty. Sufficient for a first down. And as he tackled him high, he reached up and got his hand caught in his face pick. That happens a lot when you're trying to tackle big backs. The Longhorns with the football at the Red Raider 47. Texas trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Williams, after a short gain, tackled on the backside by Monte Rager. One of the things that Texas has got to do tonight is not self-destruct, either through turnovers or penalties. They've got to pressure, their defense does, the Texas Tech offense, and James Brown must feel good, and by that we mean he has got to play a great game, throwing the ball and running the football. He's got the Longhorns moving now, second down and eight. Williams again, and five, six black helmets to the football, and another flag comes in. That's typical Red Raider defense. They fly to the ball. Coaches talk about it. The Red Raiders live it. They live it. They swarm the football, and they want six or seven guys around the ball carrier all the time, and it looks like it's going to be another face mask by the way the Red Raiders are reacting on defense. Face mask on the defense, five-yard penalty, and it remains second down. 
Well, he's tough to tackle, but you have to do it legally. But it goes back to what I said before. Everybody wants to tackle him up high, and you're going to see a defender there reach around and kind of get his hand caught in his face there. That was a tough one to call, but it was the correct call that time by the official. And look for a few more tonight, believe me. It was Rager who made the tackle and also grabbed the face mask. So second down and two. Brown, QB draw with room. And he'll dive to the 28-yard line. Ricky Brown made a nice block to spring him. Kyle Shipley finally made the tackle. You know, he had an ankle injury earlier in the year also, and it, it decreased his mobility, but it doesn't look like it has any effect there. He sees the hole, he gets up the field, he reaches for more yardage. He is on fire so far tonight, and again, John Makovic told us yesterday the guy has had a great week of practice. First and ten. Give it to Williams. Nowhere to go. He lost the football. Check it. It was Ricky Brown. And they're going to say he was down. Horace Rucker, the other defensive end, was in the backfield almost at the same time the ball arrived. Well, that might have been a questionable call on that one. It's a little toss sweep to the outside, and the big man Rucker comes up the field, but the ground does call, cause the fumble that time. So it was the right call by the officials. And that guy right there would have loved to have seen the ball bounce loose. A loss of five yards on the play. Second and 15 slot to the top. James Brown throwing, man wide open. First down, Jamel Thompson. Just his seventh reception of the year. You know, one of the things that's happened to the Texas offense this year, John McVick wants to throw the ball. And the way to throw the ball is to get James Brown on the corner. That time, he does a wonderful job of getting pressure in his face, but yet throwing the ball down the field. And I'll tell you, Jamel Thompson is a good receiver that's going to see a lot of action tonight. This is Ricky Williams. Nowhere to go. As Ty Ardwan made another play. There's James Brown. And... This week in practice, James Brown went to John McAvick. He said, I want to feel a game-like situation in practice on Tuesday and Wednesdays, their big work day. And so they pushed the tempo up, Artie, and they threw the ball in practice three times as much as they normally do. But they do. also had more teamwork because what's happening in college football right now, you only have a 20-hour work week. And he felt he wasn't getting enough game-type situations. So John McAvick changed the practice for him to see more game situations. William Frank flanks to the top of your screen. Quick slant. And it was caught at the one, and there is a flag as well in the area of interference. Kwame Cavill made the tackle in front of Tony Dart, the senior corner. Well, that looked like interference, and I think Tony knows it because he's getting a little acting lesson there. But this guy right here, Kwame Cavell, they're going to run the ball or throw the ball to him tonight. This is a slant pattern, which is what people run down inside the 20 because it allows the receiver to go over the middle, find a gap, jump up and catch the ball around the goal line. It pass interference. The ball will be placed on the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Well, first, let me correct something. He came up with it after it hit the ground, so it was an incomplete pass, but as you just heard, it'll be first and goal at the two because of the interference on Tony Darden. And in the red zone, Texas has been very, very good. Again, their problem this year has been turnovers. Right, and red zone defense for Texas Tech has been also pretty good. Williams sweeping for the end zone. Touchdown! His 20th rushing touchdown of the year. You give your money player the football because he'll find the end zone. Bill Dawson, Mr. Automatic, pounds it through, and Texas 
breaks on top seven and nothing after a 91 yard drive and that's going to give this texas offense a whole lot of confidence because not only is james brown making plays but obviously ricky williams is and he just buries his shoulder here and reaches across the goal line again he can break tackles he can run inside he can run off tackle and he can run outside now that is just a bull right there at 220 pounds driving the ball up inside and determined to get into the end zone So the Longhorns with a lead in the late first quarter. And we remind you that next week on College Football Saturday, the Houston Cougars will play Southern Miss. And then Texas A&M will visit Norman, Oklahoma to battle the Sooners. All this plus Cal and Arizona. That's next week on Fox Sport Nets College Football Saturday. Check your local listings as always. Rocky Williams, the junior from San Diego, said he wanted to leave Southern California. Well, his two heroes were Bo Jackson and Marcus Allen when he was growing up. But when he visited the University of Texas campus, he fell in love with it. In fact, his whole family has moved out here now, and he is now considered a Texan in his mind. And they hope he sticks around for his senior year. That's debatable, the kind of year he's had this season. That was the second longest drive of the year for the University of Texas. Dane Johnson and John Norman, 38, back deep. This will be Johnson at the nine. Out to the 27, and we take a Dr. Pepper game break with Kevin Frazier. Kevin? Big game of the day, Michigan and Penn State. Byron Greasy hits Jeremy Toomey for seven yards out. 34-8 the final four. Wolverines roll and they give up their first touchdown of the season in the second half. That was basically the only bad news, guys. I guess Michigan's pretty good and for real. And maybe Penn State was a little bit overrated because I thought going into the game, Penn State had a chance to win. And then when I saw the conditions back there, I really thought Penn State would win. Out of boot, Zebby Lethridge looking, throwing, complete. He has it to Tim Wynn, his tight end. And Wynn will move the chains for Texas Tech. And what Texas Tech is doing, they're coming up to the line of scrimmage, and they're going on a quick count. What they want to try to do with this big offensive line is beat the Texas front to the punch. And it allows that guy right there to get a little bit more of a jump on getting the ball outside when it's a waggle pass, a bootleg pass, or a play action pass. Zebby's without one of his weapons today. Donnie Hart, his top wide out, can't go with a hamstring injury. Zebby brings it down, and now he is dropped. Sean Rogers, second sack of the year, the true freshman from LaPorte, Texas. He was scheduled to redshirt. But the injuries in the Texas defensive front didn't allow him to. And he's a big old guy that stays in his lane, and Zephy looks to throw the ball downfield. There's no one to throw. That's a covered sack. And the big guy, Rogers, who's 6'4", 300, comes off and makes the play. Tonight for Tech, they got to try to control the game early, limit Ricky to 125 yards, and Zebby must be mobile, which he didn't show on that last play. Second and 14 option look, wide side of the field, Williams breaks a tackle and makes positive yardage before he takes a lick from Donald McCowan. Texas defense is really flying around tonight. You're going to see an option start to develop here. And Zeppi Leverage does a good job of pitching the ball. But big old Aaron Humphreys, who's been injured, forces him outside. And the rest of his defensive backmates rally up to make the tackle. That's good swarm that time by the Longhorn defense. And now Texas Tech is in the third and long, a situation they don't like to be in. Now they convert only 38% on third down. And this one is not in their comfort area third and nine mckenzie goes in motion blitz comes from texas Lethridge gets out of it somehow downfield he had a man wide open and he could not hook up with rob peters the backup quarterback who caught a couple of passes last week 
And that was, that was a good scramble that time of getting away from the blitz because the one thing you got to do is try to get outside. And what Texas does not do, Chris Smith, number 87, has got to get up the field and contain that. You can't let a guy like him get out on the corner because a receiver like Peters is going to run away from the defensive back, and he was wide open. It just was a poor pass that time by Lethridge. Hernandez's turn to punt. Hodges Mitchell, Brian White. Back deep. Mitchell at the 12. Cut down. Right around the 19-yard line. Dane Johnson made the play. And now they're going to say he never went down, and they're going to move it up to the 34-yard line. 44-yard punt, 22-yard return. How about that for balance? Well, Sunday on Fox Sports Net, Tiger Woods Mania goes global with the Tiger Woods Invitational from Japan. Tiger has a competitive field that also features Mark O'Meara and Nick Price. That's the Tiger Woods Invitational from Japan Sunday on Fox Sports Net. And now they have corrected it and moved it back to the 21-yard line. Plays dead at the 20-yard line, first and 10. I thought he was down, Hardy. You know, it looked like he was down to me. Now, he's only 5'7", so maybe they had a hard time, but he is clearly knocked down. He doesn't hit the ground, but he hits a Red Raider who's laying on the ground, and that is considered the ground. That's a good call by the official. Ricky Brown and Ricky Williams split backs. James Brown on the backside, and it is complete. At the 33-yard line, now they say incomplete. Cavill didn't put up a big argument. The ball touched the ground, but that guy is going to get a lot of work tonight. Because as we've talked about, he's a big guy. He's the kind of guy John Makovic loves to throw the football to. John Makovic coached the Kansas City Chiefs and the Dallas Cowboys, where they had big receivers, and he's trying to recruit big guys to play that wide receiver and flanker position here in Texas. Late stages of quarter number one, the Longhorns lead seven and nothing, second and ten. Thompson in motion, give it to Williams, not much do it again. So far, the Red Raider defense has shut down number 11. Well, they, they concentrate on him, and they say that if Texas is going to win the game tonight, they're going to do it through the air. But that guy thinks that he's got to win the game through the air because he knows that Texas Tech is going to have eight and nine guys very close to the line of scrimmage to stop the run. And that's what you got to do to stop a guy like Ricky Williams, but you leave yourself a little vulnerable in the passing department. Third and nine. Slot to the top. Blitz coming, full package, screen set up, all kinds of room. This is Derek Lewis, and he gets it to the 38-yard line. First down, long orange, the tackle by Keith Cockrum. Derek Lewis is a versatile tight end. You're going to see him at the left side of the offensive line there. He chips the defender. He comes across the middle. The rush guys from Texas Tech are coming up the field. It's perfectly executed and perfectly set up. And I'll tell you, those things, Drew, are very difficult to defend. Great call with the maximum blitz. The first quarter history in Austin. The Longhorns behind Ricky Williams have a 7 0 lead on Texas Tech. State Capitol in Austin made of pink granite, I've been informed by our producer, Bob Steinfeld, who is a graduate. We think he's a graduate well, of the university. Well, he knows everything there is to know about the University of Texas. I guarantee that. And time. the Capitol, and Austin. Isn't your home built of pink granite? Yeah. Here's Ricky Williams, squirts through a hole. That is one of his better gains of the ball game. He had 15 yards rushing on eight trips prior to that. James Brown has been making it happen with his arm tonight. Though over the last few weeks, he has struggled. One touchdown, six interceptions. In fact, over the last five games, he's completed just 38 and a half percent of his passes. But tonight, good numbers. Yeah, but in his defense, number one, he's trying too hard. Number two, the defense has just given up a bunch of points, and they've been behind a lot, but he's had a bunch of young receivers, and there really hasn't been a rhythm in this passing game so far this year. Here's a reverse. 
Running with the football, Jeremy Jones, well read by Texas Tech. Hard to fool those guys. Well, he did that last week. He had a 23-yarder against Baylor. And he's a guy that's small. They put him in the game, though, to run this reverse, and he does a good job of it. They worked for about 15 minutes on this play in practice yesterday. And all it is is off of their favorite play, which is the counter pull the backside guard and backside tackle. And he just sneaks around. But when he gets the ball, and if he gets a little bit of room, he's a dangerous guy. When you run one of those gadgets, already, you hope to get more than a couple of yards. Yeah, but you know, we we asked Makovic about this yesterday. Even though they ran a couple gadgets last week, they are not a gadget offense. Texas has called a timeout. They'll face a third and three when we return to Austin. The Longhorns leading the Red Raiders. Texas leading the Red Raiders seven to nothing. The Texas Longhorns have played five of their last six games on the road. They are just one and two at home this year. Ricky Williams, the great running back. John Makovic, his coach, talked about him earlier today. Everyone would love to coach Ricky Williams. He's so bright and learns everything. He knows all the plays. He knows different positions. I told people we could stick him almost anywhere and he could play immediately. But he's fun because you can talk to him. And the other thing is, in the game, uh, I can go up and mention something to him and he can change right then and there and do it. So that's what I find so much uh, about him that's enjoyable. The other thing is he loves to run. I've never been around an outstanding running back who didn't love to run. And when he touches the ball in practice, it's nothing for him to run 50, 60, 70 yards, play after play. Well, nowhere to run there for Ricky Williams. Ball is still loose. Texas Tech has it. Big Chris Kachurik. True freshman, 6'5", 270 from Caldwell, Texas. Kyle Shipley knocked it out. And you know, that ball got knocked out. Ricky did not fumble it. It just got knocked out of his hands. And that's what happens when you have a defense that's running around like that. And old Shipley comes up and just strips the ball before Williams goes down to the ground. And that's good defense right there. That's swarming defense. And that's what you have to do against a guy like a Ricky Williams. Maybe look for Tech to go downtown on this, Drew. Another Texas turnover. Well, Zeppi Lethridge went conservative. He kept it on the ground. Jonathan Hawkins got a yard or so. Cedric Woodard in the middle of the defensive line for Texas made the play. You know, coming into the game, Texas had committed 28 turnovers, and they had led to 103 points for the opposition. You can't turn the football over and expect to win in pro football, college football, or high school football. But that defense right there deserves the credit for getting the ball back on that one. Lethridge on an out and up, and that's great coverage. Trying to get it to Malcolm McKenzie, Quentin Jammer was with him stride for stride on the double move, Artie. You know, Texas has been maligned, so to speak, in the secondary. They started a lot of freshmen. A year ago, they had four guys that had started over 150 games. So this secondary of Texas is young. And Donald McCowan right there is a free safety. But he does a wonderful job of covering also. you got to be able to cover today if you're a safety, not only on tight ends, but on wide receivers. Third and ten from the plus 37. Quick count. Lethridge down the middle of a slant. And he could not hook up with McKenzie there. But a flag comes in. Well, I guess they picked up the flag. They were saying fourth down. Yeah, there was no call on that. And again, whatever that happened to the, to the official's flag, he put it right back in his pocket. You know, you talk about the punters. We talked to Spike Dyke. Why do you use two guys? And he calls, he says, well, I have a feel for it. He says, whoever I feel is going to kick good is the guy I tell to go in there and kick. Very, very interesting way of doing it. Not a good punt there. Roberson. Hits it into the end zone. It's a 37-yard punt, but just 17 on the net. That's why Spike Dykes is upset. That's a feel. Well, I had a couple. I had a couple reasons. The first reason was it's the first game in a long time on grass 
for Nebraska, and you know what happened to them in Sun Devil Stadium a year ago on grass. The second thing is Missouri knows how to defense the option because their offense runs it. And the third thing is I would bet you a lot of money that Missouri spent some time with the Arizona State coaches and were talking about how to beat that Nebraska offense. So to me, there was a lot of things that led or that led you to believe that Missouri had a chance to beat them today. They almost got the job done. Nebraska scored on the last play of regulation to force overtime. Texas leads here 7 to nothing. They have it at their own 20. And Hodges Mitchell, another one of those true freshmen playing, tumbles ahead for three yards. Seems every week we talk about true freshmen and redshirt freshmen. These two schools playing a ton of them. Well, you know, if a freshman is good enough to help you win, then you should play him. I think the idea of redshirting the freshman class is now a thing of the past because you only have 85 players on scholarship. And if a young man like Mitchell can help, let him play. They fake the counter. James Brown whips a pass complete to Jamel Thompson. His second catch of the ball game. Bright kid whose father ran track at the Naval Academy. He's from Skyline High School in Dallas. That was an example of the athletic ability, though, of James Brown. He fakes inside, and then he gets out on the corner, which is, allows a guy like Thompson to come free because a defensive back can only cover for four to five seconds. Ricky Williams not in there right now. It's Mitchell and Clayton. Nearly intercepted, breaking on the football was Darwin Brown. And Artie, I don't think he saw the ball. I don't either. He was looking at his man, which is what you're supposed to do in man-to-man. -man. And the ball was thrown a little bit behind Thompson, and luckily it hit Brown. Now, this guy right here has got to do a little bit better job of leading the receiver. But John Makovic said something very interesting about James Brown. He said, you know, some people are down on him because he hasn't had a great year. He said, you know what? Every time I take the field with him, I expect him to do great things. Brown keeps it. Brown a little of this. And then Tony Rager jumps on his back and brings him down after an advance of two yards. But he has not lost confidence with the premise of what he was saying. No, and that guy right there, Monty Rager, hasn't lost confidence either. And right there you saw a great athlete like Rager chasing down a guy like Brown. And when you isolate on him, you're going to see how hard he plays. The ball goes away, he flattens out down the line of scrimmage, his teammates get there, and he runs from behind. And you know what I like about that? He tried to strip the ball from behind with his right arm. That guy's an All-American football player. Third down and eight. Price coming on a blitz. Brown is sacked. Norman. Now, now you talk about freshmen. Now Norman's a freshman from Midland, and he's the nickel guy. And when he comes in, he plays either the nickel back or a nickel linebacker. And they bring him that time up inside, and he makes a wonderful tackle. He's 200 pounds, and he's a big defensive back that can play that nickel position. And believe me, Drew, it's not easy to tackle a quarterback when you come clean on a blitz. We see so many people miss tackles in those situations. Red Raiders love to bring people to the secondary. Mark Schultz gets it away, and it is a short punt. Dane Johnson at the 25. And he is erased at the 30-yard line, a punt of 42, a return of five. The Red Raiders trailing 7-0 Tuesday on Fox Sports Net. Don't miss a behind-the-scenes look inside the NFL on NFL Total Access, followed by a hardcore football with featured guests Neil Smith, Vince Ferragamo, Michael Strahan, and Wayne Corbett. It's NFL coverage like no other network. That's NFL Total Access and hardcore football Tuesday on Fox Sports Net. As always, check your local listings. I caught the show this past week. That's a good show. Great show. Vince, Vince Ferragamo's on this week. He's the guy I coached when I was at the University of California. Vince Ferragamo, former Husker. Ricky Williams. Fine throw for 11 yards. He had to sweep about five yards into his backfield and then got north and south. Ricky Williams, 5'9 and 175. Rick Dykes. 
Spike Dyke's son is the offensive coordinator. He says he's even tougher than we thought when we recruited him. Yeah, and what he did last summer, he came in and worked out all summer long in an effort to be the starting tailback. And right here, you're going to see him break a couple tackles on his own. He does not look like the other Ricky Williams, but he's going to be a star someday in his own right. Lethridge gives it to Williams Ricky again. Williams. Big opening. He's got it to the 42-yard line of Texas. Finally brought down by Aaron Babino. You know, run behind Kirk Whitney again. I hope we didn't feature the wrong Ricky Williams here tonight because that's two big runs by him. And you know, I was kidding him the other day at practice. I said, how come you didn't go to Texas? And he said, well, I didn't think I could be a starter as a freshman because they've got a guy by the name of Ricky Williams. Give it to the fullback, Jonathan Hawkins for a couple. Brandon Nava. And Cedric Woodard on the stop. It'll set up second down in about eight. Our Burger King game summary. Texas on a 91-yard drive. The only points in this football game. And Texas has been able to control the football. But interestingly, they've been able to do it really by the pass. Look at the numbers for Ricky Williams, who's been over 200 yards his last four games. He's trying to join Marcus Allen and Barry Sanders as the only two to go over 205 straight. Yeah, it's a long game, though. Don't anybody panic. He'll get some yards. Here's the other Ricky Williams. And he is very close to a first down. Stop probably about a yard short you know what they want to do with texas tech they want to run the zone play and they want to run simple running plays because quite frankly they've got a big offensive line but they're young and right now they have a hard time picking up stunts so that man right there spike dykes told me the other day he wants to be simple with that offensive line so the little guy ricky williams can find his hole behind him now so far it's working but they are just simple straight ahead plays Third and two, quick snap count. Williams is very close to a first down. I don't know if he got enough though. Chris Smith stuck his nose in there and made the tackle. This might be four down territory if they're short anyhow for Spike Dykes. They've scored just uh, one offensive touchdown in the last three weeks. So they've had some problems offensively. Well, and if I were Spike Dykes, I would go for it here if it were fourth down. Because, again, you got big guys up front. Texas has not played well on defense all year. you got to take the chance to try to win the game. And we'll see what he does. You know, this year so far, he is two for eight. Texas Tech is two for eight on fourth down tries. To me, you hand it off behind the big guy, Jonathan Gray, and you just try to drive Texas off the football. You're going to see big Jonathan here, number 79 on the last play. The house comes off, and he hits a couple guys, but he gets knocked down. But that is a big man trying to block a linebacker or a defensive end. That's a house that lost its foundation. <laughs> you tell him that, not me. I could say it from up here. Fourth down and a few inches. Full house backfield for the Red Raiders. Blake easily has the first down and plenty more to the 26-yard line of Texas. A little trickery that time by Texas Tech. They took the house and they put him on the other side of the street. It's going to be unbelievable. Watch the house here. He's going to move to the other side of the street to an unbalanced line. Texas does not adjust, so they are minus a guy on the side in which they run. And the house falls down and holds somebody, but nobody sees it. That's a heck of a job by Spike Dykes. So they relocated the house. They relocated the house. Here's Zebby on the option. And Lethridge cut it out. And he pops back up quickly. Quentin Jammer knocked him down. But a decent gain on first down. Best offensive series for the Red Raiders in this football game. 7.22 to go in the second quarter. Texas leading 7 to nothing. Talked to Spike Dykes. Uh, we both did earlier this week. And he said, you know what? Despite all the problems, football is fun. You're supposed to enjoy it. He said, you don't have to always put a carrot out there for everybody to play for. He said, there were thousands of games this weekend between high school and college. And you know, this guy is a fit at Texas Tech, and he enjoys football. Fullback again, Jonathan Hawkins. Aaron Humphrey 
made the tackle number 49. That's great news for Texas. And yeah, it is, but this guy right here, Hawkins, is a guy that Spike Dykes wants to develop into a Nebraska type of fullback. And they've worked at those quick hitting plays up inside because Spike says, hey, we're gonna have a great tailback here in Ricky Williams, but we need a compliment his ability to run the football with a good fullback attack. And so far, it's working. Reason it's good news to see Humphrey out there. He wasn't scheduled to go. He has a bad knee, didn't play against Baylor. Third down, Williams will have the first down inside the 15-yard line to the Ricky 13. Williams, number 35. And we take a Dr. Pepper game break. We head out west to Kevin Frazier. Kevin? Drew, the big battle in the ACC for supremacy. Florida State strikes first. That buzzy to Melvin Pearsall. The Seminoles on top, 7-0. It's early, though. It's only the first quarter. Who do you like in this one, Artie? I, I like Florida State because I think Bobby Bowden's one of the top coaches in the country. And offensively and defensively, they're in the top 10 in most categories. Williams on the option. Not much doing there. Texas did a very good job. Texas Tech has got to throw the ball a little bit here because Texas is sitting there waiting for the option that time. And that's a good swarm by the Texas defense of getting the Ricky Williams and gang tackling him down to the ground. Watch for Texas now to continue this swarming. They've done a good job so far and try to strip the ball. Texas Tech so far this year has done a good job inside the red zone, but the Longhorn defense has not been as proficient as John McAvick would like. They run to the short side of the field. Williams tripped up about the six-yard line. And if Anthony Hicks didn't get his shoelaces, I think Ricky would have gotten in the end zone. Well, one of the problems he had at the beginning of the year, he tripped too much. And he kind of came out of that around the middle of the season. But it looks like he's tripping again tonight. One of the things that happens to backs, though, sometimes they run better on turf as opposed to grass. And this is a great surface here, but it looks like the grass that time made the tackle. Third down and three for the Red Raiders. Offset eye. Williams, nowhere to go. Tackled in the backfield. Anthony hits again. Bobby Jack Wright, the defensive coordinator, told me yesterday, Anthony Hicks is playing super right now. And that was a super play at a big time. And you can hear the hit, and you can hear the emotion here. And you know, Hicks is an interesting guy. He says people call him Mike Tyson because his voice is like Mike Tyson. Well, he delivered a knockout punch that time like Mike Tyson. You better believe it. Tony Rogers to attempt the... 26-yard field goal from the near half, and he just got it through. And the Red Raiders are on the board. They wanted six. They'll have to settle for three. 4.18 to go before halftime in Austin. The Longhorns leading the Red Raiders 7-3. Crowd in excess of 70,000 expected tonight. Texas leading Texas Tech 7-3. And coming up at halftime, we'll get you caught up on all the happenings in college football. The race for number one, the big blue defense, the maze in blue defense. And JR is John Robinson. SC had a nice afternoon. Well, it sounds like, and boy, there was some great college football this afternoon, and there's some great college football going on right here in Austin, Texas tonight, because this game will go down to the wire. These players are really playing with passion and really playing hard tonight. These two schools always seem to get after one another. Tony Ellis from the goal line. And he'll get it only to the 15-yard line. The scoring drive for Texas Tech on their last possession, 13 plays, 63 yards. And most of those yards picked up by Ricky Williams, who has outrushed the more famous Ricky Williams. Well, so far, but you got to credit the Ricky Williams from Texas Tech's offensive line for doing the job and i think some smart play calling that time by rich dykes the offensive coordinator i thought he had the texas defense a little bit off balance 
Ricky Williams, after not playing the last series, back in there, he gets the call. Ricky Williams. And he gets a few yards. He actually knocked over Eric Butler, the 260-pound middle linebacker. You know, I spent a few minutes with Butler the other day, and I love this guy. He's a typical big linebacker. He sees the ball, he shuffles, he goes, and he delivers the hit. Now, he gets knocked back a little bit, but he was in the perfect position. And I asked him, who would you like to be? He said, I'd like to be Al Davis. I said, why? He said, so the Oakland Raiders would draft me number one with their first draft choice. I thought that was a great answer. Smart guy. Wants to be Al Davis. Ricky Williams. Williams punishing tacklers and getting close to a first down. That was a typical Ricky Williams run. Well, we talked about him breaking tackles and making the tough yard. And every time you see him carry the ball up inside, he is going to make somebody hurt after the tackle. And here he does. He keeps his legs moving, and he uses his helmet as a battering ram and gets some extra yards. This guy is a complete back. We talked about him. He's not only a wonderful kid, but he's also a student of the game of football, which makes him just an exciting person. First and 10 for Texas. Brown, wide of his target. That's Robert Dolnig, a junior. And James Dolnig on a different page. I think he thought he was going to hook up, and he turned out. Well, that's what I talked about at the beginning. Part of the problem with this offense has been the inexperience at wide receiver. That guy tries too hard sometimes, but sometimes the receiver doesn't run the right route. And no one in the stands knows it. They always blame it on the poor quarterback. But sometimes it's a miscommunication between him and the wide receiver, and especially these young wide receivers from Texas. Two receivers to the top. Derek Lewis sets up as the tight end to the near side. Brown flush. Now thrown down the field. It is complete. This is David Aaron. All the way to the 43-yard line of Texas Tech. Good improvisation by James Brown. Okay, what are you going to see? You're going to see Aaron in here. Now, he's the inside receiver. Now, he's a big old guy. He is all a 6'4", six, 6'4 four, six, four and a half. Now, Brown starts scrambling around. He pushes the defensive back off. He waits. He comes back to the football, and he finds the opening, and Brown First throws him the football. Good job by the receiver that time of making a place where he can get open. 32 yards on the hookup. Brown in trouble. And he's knocked down from the weak side. And they're going to say that he's down on the ground. No fumble. The sack by Keith Cockrum. John Goodner, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech. He has guys flying all over the place. Well, here comes the blitz with Cockrum up top. And no one touches him. He's lined up outside. There is a clean shot to the quarterback. Now, he's a 4.0 student, so he should make that play. He should take the proper angle, which is what he did that time, because he has got to be getting A's in geometry and all those things. He's never gotten anything but an A. He's never gotten anything but an A in a 4.0. Second down. Second down and 20, a loss of 10. All the way back to the Longhorn 47. Another blitz coming. Picked up this time. Brown trying to find somebody open, and nobody's available like a schoolyard play up for grabs intercepted tony darton second pick of the year james brown is flat exhausted and for jb that is interception number 10 on the year another example that time of trying to do too much now what happens up the top here texas tech does not contain it. When you're blitzing, somebody's got to contain the quarterback. You got to fight to get outside. Brown starts to scramble, but he comes back across the field, which is all good stuff. Texas Tech is chasing, but he should run the football. He shouldn't stop and throw the football back across the grain. You got to make smarter decisions than that. Run the football. That play lasted forever. If it was a movie, it would have been a double feature. Here's Zevi flushed, and he gets nine. Finally brought down by Anthony Hicks, and he is across midfield. Well, one thing you're not lacking in this conference is athletic quarterbacks and athletic defensive backs. As you see, the secondary coach there talked to the defensive backs from Texas Tech. 
This guy, when he's healthy, is an outstanding athlete. In fact, a lot of people think he might be the best athlete at quarterback in this league when he's healthy. He ran it pretty well for a guy with a bad ankle on that play. Yeah, and this guy had a bad ankle, but he should he looks okay tonight. I think his mobility's fine. Second and two for Lethridge. And his pass was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Gray Bozier got a piece of it. He's trying to throw it to Rob Peters, as we mentioned earlier, the backup quarterback. Peters is a big target, too. He's 6'3 and 230 pounds. You know, it's amazing what the Texas Tech coaches do with this guy, Peters. He's the backup quarterback, he's the third-team fullback, he's the holder on PAT and field goals, and he's on all the special teams. This guy's really a heck of a football player. 120 to go, and Lethridge did not get it off. Gray Mosier, the overachieving junior. Started the year at defensive end. They had to move him inside because of injuries. And, and we talked about him yesterday. He's a blue-collar football player that just plays hard. Here you see the ball go away from him. He flies out down, down the line of scrimmage and makes the play. Coach Bobby Jack Wright loves guys like him because he brings his work ethic to, to work each and every day. He is what you call a blue-collar, lunch pail defensive lineman. Jeremy Hernandez to punt. Brian White back at his own 10-yard line. And this is punted out of bounds, but I don't know if he got it inside the 20. Hernandez was not going to make the same mistake that Roberson made and punt it into the end zone. No, because he would have gotten a feel that time from Spike Dykes again. 24-yard <laughs> line, or 22-yard line after the 24-yard punt. We take a look at the team rushing stats brought to you by First Plus Financial and the Conference Nebraska leading, and they lead the country. The old Big 8 was a great running conference, Artie. And this one is, too, because you look at this thing down here, seven teams in the top 20. You better bring your helmet when you play a Big 12 team. I think it's always a good idea to bring your helmet. Yeah, I know. You might be able to bring your shoulder pads, too. The out cut. Is it picked off? Yes. Intercepted by Darwin Brown. Now they'll say it's incomplete. One official said it was picked off. And the second official came in and said it hit the ground. James Brown breathes a sigh of relief. The pass is ruled incomplete. Second down. That was a good move that time on the football by Darwin Brown. He sees the ball being delivered. He goes for the football, not the receiver. He catches it, and the ball does come out of his hands. So that was a good call that time by the official. But it was a great read by Darwin Brown of playing the football in the air and not the man. But he just, you know, I don't like it when receivers and DBs wear gloves. Get those gloves off so you can catch the football. It's not that cold here. Hey, that was very close. Movement, Rager jumps, and the play goes on. Ricky Williams with his best gain of the night. Out to the 39-yard line. Flag came in, and I'm sure Texas will decline the offside penalty, if in fact it is offside. Side on the defense, the penalties decline. Timeout, Texas. So Texas burns the timeout. The ball at their own 39-yard line. Good call. What happens that time? They flick the tight end over to the other side. So Rager starts off with a tight end in his face, but then he jumps offside when the tight end leaves. And the Texas Tech defense did not adjust to the tight end going to the other side. John Makovic feels that's a real big part of the game plan tonight to keep moving the tight end from side to side. And a lot of the times, they want to put him against Rager because he's so good. So in essence, you have two guys over on the same side. Let's give you an update on Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams for Texas and Ricky Williams for Texas Tech. And how many people would have guessed this? 
Well, I'm confused, but I guess this is the guy from Peck right there. So we'll say he's winning the battle so far. But to me, the biggest thing is 2.9 yards per carry for Ricky Williams from Texas. That's a heck of a job right now by the Red Raider defense. And, you know, the Red Raider defense coming in, they said, uh, you know, we want to try to slow Ricky Williams down, but we know we can't shut him down. We want to play our style of defense and not get over uh, indulged in stopping one guy. Well, no, that's true, because when you're playing against a great back, and believe me, I've been around a lot of them between Eric Dickerson at the Rams, Charlie White at Southern Cal, Marcus Allen at Southern Cal. You don't stop great backs. You try to slow them down, and you can't overcommit too many guys because the Texas has got too many other weapons that can beat you. 15 seconds left, first and 10. Brown throws the out cut, and it is complete out of bounds to Jamel Thompson. And the clock has continued to move. I guess they said he was not out of bounds. And Texas calls a timeout with four seconds left. I think what they wanted to do was give Phil Dawson an opportunity to kick a long field goal with some wind at his back. But this thing would be a, a monumental boot right now. They needed to get probably another 10 15 yards to have a realistic shot. Yeah, and it looked like Cavill was trying to get out of bounds, but the defender from Texas Tech kept him in bounds. So that was a heads-up play that time by the Texas Tech defense. And there's Spike Dykes, and he is proud of this defense. He's an old defensive coach himself, and he knows what it takes to play good defense. And you know, talking about guy like Spike Dykes, Drew, I think he is the perfect fit for Texas Tech. You know, he was born in Lubbock. He's a West Texas guy. I, I don't think you could get a better football coach to be the coach at Texas Tech than Spike Dykes. Well, he's one of the most colorful, charismatic people. Just a joy to be around. I mean, you could sit back and listen to Spike Dykes talk to you and he'd entertain Spike you for a week <laughs> you know the, the other day he had a hat on it was a, a hat with a bulldozer on it and i said to him i said spike why are you wearing that hat because i thought somebody was paying him to wear the hat and he says to me because somebody gave it to me he's wearing a bulldozer hat in practice well that record he wins a lot of football games when you're supposed to late october into november final play of the half james brown down the middle and it's caught but stopped short of the end zone is Jamel Thompson at the four-yard line. So it'll look pretty in the stats, but it won't amount to much on the scoreboard. 7-3, Texas leading Tech. We go out west to Kevin Frazier. Thanks a lot, Drew. Great game down in Austin. 7-3, Longhorns are on top of the Red Raiders. Go ahead, big day in the Big Ten. Salma Wilcox is going to join in. Me and my partner will have highlights and scores from across the country, including the wildest game in Big 12 history. That's coming up next. It's halftime in Austin. Horns on top, 7-3. We'll be back with more college football Saturday right after this. A year ago, they put 70 points on the board, but only 10 in the first half tonight. Back with Artie Gigantino, I'm Drew Goodman. Defense, the story in the first half in both Texas and Tech played well. Yeah, and Tech is really playing well because they've held Texas to only 29 yards rushing so far, which is just outstanding defense. Well, you've been chomping at the bit all night to draw on your board, so go ahead. Well, that's what I do the best, and here's exactly what Texas Tech is doing on defense. They're putting their Raider defensive back Price up close to the line of scrimmage. An outside linebacker over here, and big old Dane Johnson, the free safety, he's got the ability to run inside out. So in essence, what the Red Raiders have done they've got nine guys close to the line of scrimmage and Ricky Williams when he gets the ball here or he gets the ball there has got nowhere to run which is why they've only got 29 yards rushing so far in the first half now look for Texas though to try to throw the ball even more here in the second half because one of the negatives of this is you put your cornerbacks in a tough position man to man and Drew that's the way I see it on the chalkboard all right Artie thank you Texas has done a good job throwing the football you mentioned they might do more of it in the second half but on defense they played well as well as uh, Ricky Williams was stuffed by Anthony Hicks that forced a field goal watch James Brown he's going to be chased down by Monte Rager from behind Rager was all over the field James Brown was sacked four times in the first half and when he wasn't sacked he was running for his life and here a bad decision yeah he should have run the football because they pick up positive yardage and you never want to throw back against the grain especially against a swarming defense like that 
So we are set to go in the third quarter. Texas will kick it deep to the Red Raiders. Phil Dawson will hit it deep. Dane Johnson is back at his own five-yard line. Here we go. Dane Johnson, number 13, with the ball. And Johnson has open field. He's got great wheels. He's gone. 95-yard touchdown, no flags. This kid is remarkable. That is the fifth time in his college career he has returned a punt or a kick for a touchdown. And I was just talking about him and what a great job he's doing as a safety. But he's also a big-time kick returner. And you know what? He hasn't returned a lot of kickoffs this year, but Spike Dykes felt in this game he wanted to put his best return guy back there, and obviously it worked to perfection. Good idea. I think it was a real good idea by the Spikester. Tony Rogers tacks on the extra point, and just like that, Texas Tech goes on top, 10 to 7, just 17 seconds into the second half. And you don't want to be a return to kickoff for a touchdown. Sometimes it's good blocking, sometimes it's poor tackling, and sometimes it's just great running. And on this one, it was a combination of all three. But credit that guy, number 13, with the big effort. Here's another angle at it. You see him catch the football perfectly. He catches the ball and then re-accelerates himself up the field. But what I like here is he breaks two tackles, and he's not going to let the kicker tackle him. He has vision, and he goes right down the sidelines. And you better believe that Dane Johnson can run because he outran a bunch of Texas Longhorns that are fast football players. Yeah, the last one was J.J. Kelly who's a tight end, and that was no contest. And that's a smiling young man there. And again, he's one of those kids that Spike Dyke talks about that just loves to play the game. And the coaches love to coach guys like that because he plays it passionately, but yet he also plays it well. You know, Dane Johnson in high school played on an undefeated football team for a couple of years and also an unbeaten basketball team. So he never lost in high school. You know, 46 all in one out of high school. So you think he's a winner or what? His winning ways are in his blood. Rodgers now will kick off to Tony Ellis or Jeffrey Clayton. This will be Clayton a yard deep. And he takes a lick at the 16-yard line. And we check in with Greg Bell. Greg? Well, coming out at halftime, John McElvick said this is probably one of the best defensive games he's been around here at Texas. One of the things he said he had to do was probably split Ricky out or throw some screens to him in order for him to get his hand on the ball. Spike Dykes, on the other hand, said look for Texas Tech to throw the ball a little bit more this second half. All right, Greg. Texas Tech was not very successful when they put it up in the first half. They were just one of six throwing the football that is not good not very good but they're still winning the game because they're playing smart and trying to complement their defense by the style of offense in which they're employing they pull a guard and ricky williams plows it up in there for about four yards you know, Williams pretty well shut down in that first half. You know, we were talking to Gene Dol Dolquist, the offensive coordinator yesterday, about Ricky Williams and this offensive line, and he said, when you get on campus here as an offensive lineman, you got to learn to pull. And you got to learn to pull to get in front of guys like Ricky Williams, who is so fast they can get the ball outside. Ricky Williams, as you can see, one touchdown so far here in the first half. Second and six. Brown gets it away, and that was nearly picked off. Dwayne Price was the closest man of the ball. And we also have another penalty flag. You know, I don't know why Texas continues to run play-action pass, because play-action pass right now is not as effective against a man team. Ball is 
blocking is not as effective against a man team and a blitzing team because it takes too long. And I asked John about that yesterday, and he said play action pass was down on his hot list. But it seems like they've run four or five already tonight. You better not run too many because the quarterback, Drew, has a hard time getting rid of the football. Third down and six. Brown going against his body, and it's incomplete. Cavill couldn't hold on, and once again, James Brown knocked to the turf. Four sacks and a number of hurries. Well, you know what? He's a tough guy, though. He gets up every time, and he's really gotten hit not only this year, but tonight. And he gets knocked down to the turf. And I say it all the time, but the best way to discourage a quarterback from having a big game is to knock him down a lot, legally. And that's exactly what the Red Raiders are doing. Mark Schultz to punt. And the man who was just in the end zone a few moments ago, Dane Johnson, is set up at his own 35-yard line. Got a little oxygen. He's ready to go again. And he'll have an opportunity. He's going the wrong direction right now, though. And he will stay at the 35-yard line after the 39-yard punt. The Red Raiders by three. In Austin, 10-7, to Texas Tech leading John Makovic's Longhorns. Let me tell you the difference between the two good friends, Makovic and Spike Dykes. Makovic, to get away from footballs, reading a book by Tom Clancy, Executive Order. Well, Spike Dykes is sort of reading that book as well, except he listens to it on tape when he walks in the morning. Spike says, I'm not bright enough to read. I need it on tape. Well, opposites attract, and these two guys are opposite human beings, but they're good friends. They're golfing buddies in the offseason. They recruit against each other, and they've got nothing but the utmost respect for each other, which is very classy. 35-yard line for the Red Raiders. They lead. Give it to Ricky Williams. Huge hole. He's got 18 yards. Flip side of the 50 to the 46-yard line of Texas. One of the things that's starting to happen to the Texas defense, it's apparent from up here, they're slowing down a little bit because they're wearing down. The Texas Tech offensive line is doing a marvelous job up front of making holes. Now, one of the criticisms of the Texas defense has been lack of speed, and Ricky Williams from Tech has got speed. The freshman outshining the junior in the battle of Ricky Williams. as Zebby Lethridge picks up a few. Well, Spike Dykes and John Makovic, as we've talked about throughout the evening, are good friends. And we asked them about coaching against one another. Well, John and I have had a lot of fun together playing golf. And, uh, you know, I've got great respect for John. John Makovic is a good man. His principles are good. He's a good coach. He's a good person. And he's been a good friend for a long time. And, you know, uh, it's always um, it, it's tough. Number 35, Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams picks up a couple. I always like to coach against good friends because if he's a good friend, that means you're going to hang around with him. And if you're hanging around with him, you want him to know you beat him. So I like coaching against good friends. Dyke has, Dykes has the utmost respect for John Makovic, particularly as an offensive mind. Well, John Makovic was the Dallas Cowboy offensive coordinator, came to the uh, Kansas City Chiefs as the head coach. He is one of the best strategists in all of college football. He's got a great mind and vision of an offense. Flags come in, and this one is blown dead. You know, the amazing thing about coaching, you're under such intense pressure and scrutiny at all times. John Makovic was a genius last year when he went for it on fourth down against Nebraska. Last week, they were unsuccessful on a fourth down play at their own 29 against Baylor, and all of a sudden, he's not bright anymore. Well, things Dead change. Ball. ball start on the offense. Remains three third down after a five-yard penalty. But, but the toughest thing that he has been ha had to do this last couple of months is to fight the distractions, to keep your football team focused when they're reading in the paper and hearing on television that the coach is going to get fired. John Makovic expects to be back here at the University of Texas next year. And I think Texas should keep him here. This guy is a wonderful coach, and I think he's a tribute to this football program. 
Well, he's won 60-plus percent of his games. I'd agree with you. They should keep Makovic. Right now, Makovic's club having trouble stopping Ricky Williams. That'll be enough for another first down. Aaron Babineau, the strong safety, made the tackle. Give the credit, though, Drew, to the big guys and the little guys up front. Now you're going to see Jay Pugh, the center here. He's going to set up. It's a little delay. He's going to catch the blitzing linebacker coming inside. Keep with him. He's got to move his feet a little bit more, but that's a good job up front by that offensive line. Pugh is a returning starter from Abilene. He's six foot, 300 pounds. Texas needs to dig in. The Red Raiders on the move. And Williams has another sizable gain. He'd still be running if Donald McCowan didn't dive at his legs. Williams is getting close to 100 yards. Not the Williams you think. You know, this guy's got real speed. He hits that line of scrimmage going 100 miles an hour, which is why he gets turned over. But he gets right back up. I like his vision. I like his explosion into the hole. He could have jumped over that, that, that guy and kept running, though. Easy for you to say. From uh, oh, I, I would have been able to do it, the athlete that I am. But it was good. He got the first down. I, I'm a little confused. <laughs> about what? My athletic ability? Yes. You know, you talk about Ricky. It's amazing. He came to Tech in the summer, worked out with the team, worked out with the coaches when it was legal, lifted weights, and had his mind set on being the starter. That's why it came down to Texas Tech and Iowa State, because he felt he could step right in for Davis and for Byron Harshback. Inside handoff, breaking tackles is Hawkins. This is where schools have gotten a lot of yardage against the University of Texas. Up the middle. And to be fair to the Longhorns, and also to be fair to the critics of John Makovic, or actually to John Makovic, is that he has lost his starters up front. All four starting defensive linemen against Rutgers in game one are out of there. You're, you're right. And the, the one guy, Chris Akins, is going to be or could have been a first-round draft site. So if a team is going to use the fullback like Tech is doing with Hawkins tonight, there's some soft spots inside. And Spike Dykes told me the other day they want to run traps and they want to run belly plays up inside to try to split that Texas defense inside of the pack. And that's what they're doing. Ricky Williams has accounted for more than 50% of the ground game for the Red Raiders this year. First and 10, here's Ricky Williams again. Breaks a tackle, takes a lick, and another flag comes in. Donald McCallum, the one who delivered the blow. I like Ricky Williams, he runs hard. He really runs hard, but I like Donald McCallum as a defensive guy, a free safety, coming up and making the hit. And make no mistake about it, both of these football teams are playing extremely hard tonight. I like Randy Crystal also. This guy's in control of the game. Absolutely. Nice match on the defense. Not hard penalty. We'll replay first down. Yeah, you know, I talked about this in the first half, but when you have good running backs, the great running backs, defenders try to tackle them high and that's what happens there's a lot of grabbing going on because the running backs both this ricky williams and the texas ricky williams break a lot of tackles and that's why you've got nine penalties so far tonight and i'll bet you drew five of them are face masks there have been a number of face masks really have. coming in texas had allowed Opponents to rush for nearly five yards a carry. You just can't do that and win consistently. No, they're 106 in the nation right now in rush defense, giving up almost five yards a carry. Toward the end zone, no signal yet. And they're going to mark the ball dead inside the one yard line. Jonathan Hawkins, a half yard shy. You know, you cheat the fullback up and he hits the line of scrimmage real quick. That time, Tech came to the line of scrimmage and went on a quick quick count. And Hawkins is a big old guy. He weighs 220 pounds. He is hard to bring down. He reminds me of that fullback, Makavica from Nebraska. Powerful guy that hits the line of scrimmage quick. First and goal, Lethbridge takes it himself. Touchdown, Red Raiders. This team has come to life 
after the Dane Johnson 95-yard kick return for a touchdown to begin the second half. Well, those big plays in the kicking game are momentum changers, and obviously that was. This man was criticized a week ago for running a quarterback sneak against Kansas State that resulted in a fumble and Kansas State getting the football back. But he went right back to it because that's what he believes was the right play, and I do too. Tony Rogers trying to make it 17 to 7. He does so. So with 9.34 to go in the third quarter, Texas Tech has put two touchdowns up in the third. Zebby Lethridge got in the end zone. And then he got accosted on the sideline. All those big offensive linemen on it, they came over and they were patting him on, uh, on his head. Great team chemistry at Texas Tech. And I, I think it's a tribute to Spike Dykes because despite the sanctions and the alleged sanctions and the distractions that have been going on in Lubbock, he has kept this team together. And believe me, at practice the other day, they, they just went out and went through their business and got better. Nine yards deep, Texas will take it at the 20, and we go to Kevin Frazier for a Dr. Pepper game break. Kevin? Drew back to Chapel Hill late in the second quarter. Thad Busby throws it up. Watch the sweet catch by E.G. Green. Once again, they're throwing away from Dre Bly. Florida State adds a field goal, 17-0. Artie, my chief researcher, Brad Zager, says Florida State wins impressively. They should be number one. Well, Kevin, I don't want to say I told you so, but I did tell you so. Florida State has been in too many big games. North Carolina has not been in any big games or not enough. Florida State all the way tonight. How about that catch by E.G. Green? Well, that had something to do with it, too. <laughs> what a grab. James Brown with time. And the delivery, 36-yard line, Jamel Thompson. That's his fourth catch of the night. That was a good throw. It was a real good throw. And Texas has got to move the football here and go and get at least three points. You're going to see Brown drop back. He looks all over the field. He finds his man, and he throws the football. That's good quarterback play that time and a good job of seeing the entire football field. Well, James is a guy that throws it on timing. He doesn't have the big arm. Well, there's the next quarterback for you. Effective arm, yeah. John McAvick. Wake Forest, and in his backfield was Brian Piccolo, the late Brian Piccolo. The delay, Ricky Williams nearly lost it, and then he is punished. The tackle by Taurus Rucker. And he is big enough to punish you at 250-plus pounds, the right end. Ricky Williams is yet to break one. He has four runs this year for touchdowns in excess of 70 yards. Well, not Drew, tonight. They just got to keep giving him the football because eventually the great backs will break one. And all he's got to do is break one tackle and he can go the distance. But you got to give him the ball just like they're doing here in Texas tonight. Giving him the football and he'll pop one before the night's over. He's too good a back. By the way, on the last completion for James Brown, who now indicates he wants to call timeout, the last completion put him over 200 yards tonight throwing for the first time in a game this year. Red Raiders by 10. Well, welcome back to Austin. They snuck in a play while we were away, and James Brown was sacked for the fifth time tonight. And getting up slowly is Big Ben Adams. The Tiger Woods Invitational coming up this weekend. Make sure you join us on Fox Sports Net for that. That is tomorrow, the Tiger Woods Invitational from Japan. Players like Marco Mira will be involved. You know, and one of the reasons that Texas has been unable to, quote, rush the ball statistically is all the sacks. And there's big old Ben Adams, a big old 305-pounder out of La Mirada, California, limping off the field. It looks like an ankle twist, and Drew, I think he'll be okay. Third down at 18. Blitz coming. Brown will run, but he won't run far. 
The great thing about this Red Raider defense is their ability to pursue. They pursue, they blitz, and the timing of the blitzes. You know why I like that call right there? You have a new offensive lineman in the game. One of the tackles, one of the key guys. He's not used to playing. He does not into a rhythm of the game. So go blitz him. It's like putting a new quarterback in the game. And that is just outstanding swarm that time by the Red Raiders. Schultz is to punt it. Dane Johnson back at the 25-yard line. Check leading 17-7, halfway through quarter number three. It's a good punt by Schultz. A lot of hang time. It's the, not his longest punt, but he forces Dane Johnson, who rarely makes a fair catch, to call one there. And a good decision by Johnson, the fair catch. It. Well... Time now to take a look at our GTE Academic Performers of the Game. Keith Cochran, the Raider back, a 4-0 in finance, and Dusty Renfro, a 3-7-2 in business, and two good football players yeah, and, as well. And, and the Raider back means strong safety or rover back. He's kind of an in-between outside linebacker and strong safety. And Dusty Renfro is the middle linebacker who has really played well tonight. And he's a guy, as we talked about before, who's trying to motivate this football team on defense to play even harder. Well, they'll need to play hard here because they're down by 10. They haven't gotten much going offensively in the second half. And the Red Raiders, with a 10-point lead, have the ball in good field position at their own 38-yard line. One thing you should note about Texas Tech, as there is Dusty Renfro, is that three of the four losses this year that they have are to teams in the top 12 in the country. Right, that, that play great defense. And, you know, again, Dusty Renfro and the rest of his Longhorn teammates, they want to swarm this guy right here. And so far tonight, I'd say it's a B to a B-minus on how they're doing because field position and the inability on offense, I think, to run the football has led to some of the points for Texas Tech and obviously the big one on the kickoff return. So I think the defense from Texas has played pretty well tonight, and it's led by our man Dusty Renfro. Adrian Irvin has checked into the backfield as the tailback. Ricky Williams is out of there. Jonathan Hawkins, the up back. And Hawkins doing a lot of work tonight for a guy that had 100 yards rushing through eight games coming in. That was a great collision that time because Dusty Renfro says, hey, I'm noted for my collisions. Well, he hits a truck head on this time, not only in the blocker who he destroys, but then big old Hawkins as a fullback. That was a outstanding linebacker play. In fact, I would have given him a perfect plus on that play if I were coaching him. I like this kid, and I think he runs around. He's only a junior, and he'll get better and better. He reminds me of Zach Thomas, who used to play for the Red Raiders. Urban spins out of trouble momentarily and picks up maybe a yard or two. It'll set up third down and five. Aaron Humphrey made the tackle number 49. Speaking of middle linebacker, he started the year as a middle linebacker. Look at the house. He's checking, making sure all the parts are working. There's Mr. Renfro again. Gets the signal from the sideline, goes into the huddle, calls, split, cover 96. Ready, break, and breaks the huddle. He's the quarterback of this Texas defense. The middle linebacker is the quarterback. And you see how tonight, Texas Tech Red Raiders, they're two for nine only on third down conversions. Offset eye, Ricky Williams back in the backfield. Leverage, all kinds of time, knocked down. Gray Mosier again. If you can't get to the quarterback, you're an old defensive coordinator. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Stay on the line of scrimmage and shadow the quarterback. Now, you got to remember something. Lethbridge is only six foot, and big old Mosier's about six foot five. So, Zebby's got to get that ball over there. But you know what it looked like that time, too? He was aiming the football instead of just throwing it. You got to just throw the thing, and it'll go over the outstretched arms of the defensive lineman. Ryan Roberson to punt. Brian White at his own 15. This is a howitzer. Good punt. Back to the 10 goes White. And he gets to the 15. And we take a Dr. Pepper game break with Kevin Frazier. Kevin? Drew up in Berkeley, Arizona State, getting busy against Cal. Ryan Keeley to J.R. Redmond. Oh, the kid has another gear. And he won't stop until he gets enough. He goes in to the end zone. They add a two-point conversion. 28-7 is the lead. 
Arizona State still in the Rose Bowl hunt. All right, Kevin, thank you. That's your old club, Cal, yeah. losing. Bruce Snyder does a great job every year. He's come back. He'll go to a major bowl this year if he doesn't go to the Rose Bowl. That's clearly an example of a program like Arizona State ascending and a program like Cal descending. Cal's had three head coaches now in three years. They need continuity in that football program. First down for Texas at the 14. Pass complete to Jamel Thompson, his fifth catch, and we check in with Greg Bell. Greg, what do you have? The guys on that last series, Ben Adams came out, the big offensive guard for Texas. He rolled his ankle, and they came to the sideline and retaped it. But also on the other side of the field, Ricky Williams, the star freshman running back for Texas Tech, is having a little muscle spasm in his calf. He came out the last series to get his rub down, and he's doing the same right now. Usually see that in the early part of the football season in Texas when it's hot and it's not hot tonight it's actually cool well he's playing hard and he's you know exerting a lot of energy tonight so cramps will come up swap to the near side Brown wants a bunch and the catch is made by Cavill they'll mark it at the 43 yard line of Texas Tech what guts that time by James Brown. He gets decked again, but yet hangs in there as a presence of mind to throw the football. Now the ball is thrown a little bit behind Cavell, and Cavell sees it, and he comes back, and he goes up and gets it over Tony Darden. That's a big-time receiver play that time by Cavell, and it's what this Texas offense has been looking for. Pick up the 31. Brown to throw it again. And another good catch. It's Cavill again. What they're doing, Drew, they're working on Tony Darden. They think they've got a matchup there that they can win. And that's what happens when you have a pro head coach like John McAvick. Pro coaches are matchup guys. College guys are scheme guys. And they think they've got a big matchup. And that guy right now, James Brown, is feeling good. Well, he hasn't had a lot to smile about this year. Two good throws. And I have to be honest, Tony Darden had pretty good coverage both times. But you got a big receiver fighting for the football. The defensive back is going to lose. Big blitz. Brown works out of it. Now he's in a world of trouble. Ty Ardwood got there. Also, Eric Butler with the pressure. Six sacks tonight for the Red Raider D. You know what, though? James Brown has got to keep running on the corner. He stops and tries to make a big play out of a negative play. Great pursuit that time. Great swarm that time by the Red Raider defense. But James has got to try to outrun those guys to the corner. He's a fast guy. He's an athlete. But credit Texas Tech for having the right defense call. Second and 17. Again, a pass. Brown will run. And he'll get about seven, maybe eight yards, which will set up third and nine. Kyle Shipley, backup middle linebacker, made the tackle. See, that's what I'm talking about. When you make a decision to run, go. Now you're going to see Dane Johnson, number 13, the free safety. He's playing a middle third safety. He moves over. He looks at Brown's eyes. He's going to come up. And he's going to try to help on the tackle. Good job by the free safety of taking away the deep post, but an excellent job that time by James Brown of running for positive yardage. James Brown. Yardage in the first half, now the all-time total offense leader at the University of Texas. Brown, low throw, or is it caught by Cavill? They'll give the catch, his fifth of the night, in front of Darwin Brown. Boy, is Cavell fired up, and he should be. It's hard for me to believe that this guy was a linebacker in high school, but that's a good throw, and he catches the football. The ball does not hit the ground, in my opinion. Good concentration that time by the big guy, Cavell. Cavill, the reason he's a wide receiver, he started with the linebackers in fall practice. He was catching the ball so nicely, they said, he might make a receiver out of you. Plus, they got a couple guys hurt, but it was a good move by John McAvick and his staff. Ricky Williams. 
to the 11-yard line. Well, they've opened it up with the passing game, and now the running lane for Ricky Williams. Well, the passing game sets up the run. Everybody thinks it's the opposite. It's really not. It's a sweep. Big old Woods gets out in front of him. Ricky sees the hole, buries his shoulder, and gets up the field. That's the Ricky Williams in the running game from Texas we expect to see. But make no mistake about it, it got started because they were completing some passes, throwing the football down the field. That is Octavius Bishop on the ground, the 320-pound junior from Spring, Texas. You know who his high school coach was? Emery Bollard. That was his high school coach, the man who came to Texas, ironically, invented the wishbone, and ended up being the head football coach at Texas A&M. Emery Bollard's a high school coach right now in Texas, and he coached the big fella here who looks like he's going to be okay. Spring... Texas. You know where Spring is? Westfield High School in Spring, Texas, Drew. I'll tell you what, that is a large man. Yes. I wonder what he played in high school. I got <laughs> As the saying goes, whatever he wants. Whatever he wants. You know what, though? He's a strong guy. He bench presses 440 pounds, and he can squat 630 pounds. That is absolutely strength at its finest. So Octavius walks off. Two-year starter for Texas. How many times has John Makovic seen a guy hobble off the field this year? They have really been plagued with injuries, and all kinds of injuries. Second and two. Blitz coming. Williams with the football. And he starts for a first down to the seven-yard line. First and goal, Texas. Travis Wood pulled through the hole, got a nice block. Well, Ricky Williams is earning every yard he's getting because there's a bunch of defenders and black helmets hitting him every time. But this man can get low to the, to the ground. He can duck his shoulder. He's got vision. He can see it, and he can run through tackles. He is a load at 220 pounds. He's tough to bring down. Again, a full house blitz. Throw to the outside. Cavill could not pull it in. Darwin Brown had the coverage. James Brown let him just a little too much. It's hard to play defensive back here at Texas Tech because you're going to be in man all the time. He's, James has got to get the ball up a little bit. He's throwing to the corner of the end zone so Cavill can die for the football. But he's got to give his receiver there a chance to catch the football. Oh, and he knew it. He knew it, Drew, as soon as he threw it, that the ball wasn't going where he wanted it. And you got to credit John McAvick. He has never lost faith in Ricky Brown this entire year. Tenth play of the drive. Brown wants to run on the draw. Oh, he took a shot at the five and staggered to the three. It'll be third and goal from there. Dane Johnson covered him up with a minute eight to play in the third quarter well there looked like a little bit of confusion because ricky looked over the sidelines and said hey what was that supposed to be now i don't think that was a draw i think he just scrambled quickly because he saw the secondary from texas tech blanketing his receivers and he took off trying to make something happen two tight ends slot to the near side williams alone set back lewis in motion Block toward the end zone and nobody home. So Tech turns away Texas and forces John Makovic to jog Phil Dawson onto the field. Another blitz that time by the Texas Tech defense. You're going to see pressure come off the corner. Dwayne Price, the Rover Raider man, comes off the corner. He is untouched and he forces the poor throw. Well, it's a fun school to go to if you're a defensive back. You get the blitz, you get the cover, you get to do a little of everything. And you know, that's why Spike Dykes likes AstroTurf for artificial surfaces, because it makes his defense a lot faster. They look fast on grass to me. 20-yard field goal good by Dawson. He's 9 of 12 this year. Maybe the best kicker in America. Well, John McAvick thinks so. 17 to 10 as Texas moves within a touchdown with 30 seconds to go in quarter number three an 82-yard drive they wanted six they'll have to settle for three you know, 
now, now is what's going to have to happen. The Texas defense has got to rise to the occasion. Spike Dykes, expressionless most of the evening. Texas Tech, here's why they're on top. Second half kickoff to begin things. Dane Johnson breaks a tackle, gets to the sideline, regains his balance. He goes 95 yards for a touchdown. Biggest momentum changers in all of football are big plays for touchdowns in the kicking game. And then from a yard away, Debbie Leverage on the quarterback sneak. And after trailing 7-3 at halftime, they took a 17-7 lead. Now, let's check in on your keys to the game again, Artie. Well, we said in the beginning that Texas Tech had to control the game early. They trailed 7-3 at halftime, but I thought they were in the game and doing a good job. They have to limit Ricky Williams to 125 yards rushing. So far, they're doing that. And Zebby has got to run around and be more mobile. Now, he's only got 32 total yards, but he is running the option, and he is scrambling like his old self. So I think they're accomplishing what they had to do to win this football game. Well, both quarterbacks are running around pretty good tonight. Well, it's the day of the mobile quarterback, and if your quarterback is not mobile in college football, and in the pro game also, you can't have escapability when people are blitzing you. You have to be mobile to play the quarterback position in today's football. Bill Dawson with a boots kick. And Texas Tech will have very good field position as John Norman returns it out to the 38. And we check uh, the other keys to the game. Those for the Longhorns. Well, don't self-destruct. So far, two turnovers, four penalties. They have self-destructed a little bit. Pressure the Tech offense. No Tech turnovers. They're trying, but they're not succeeding. And James Brown must feel good. I think James is playing well tonight. He's missed a couple throws, but he's putting up big numbers at throwing the ball down the field. So I think he's playing well tonight, well enough to win. Ricky Williams back in there, and 98 is big Leonard Davis, an underline big. 6'6", six, six, and 365 pounds. I got to meet him earlier this year when we had a Texas game. He may be the largest human being I've ever seen. Well, they call him Big Worthman because he's from Worthman, Texas, population 1,020. He was a parade All-American last year, and he's a big, big guy. His future may be on the offensive line. We're done with three in Austin. 17-10, to 10, Texas Tech leading Texas as we begin quarter number four from Texas Memorial Stadium with Artie Gigantino and Greg Bell. I'm Drew Goodman. The Red Raiders trying to beat the Longhorns for the first time in the last four meetings. Well, they've had success here of late. They're 2-2 oh, yeah. two two the last uh, four trips. Absolutely. And this, I don't think it matters where you play this game. It's just a great rivalry. Leverage from his own 37-yard line. And over the head of Jonathan Hawkins. Well, what they did that time, they snuck Hawkins out into the flat. But you saw the Zebby Leverage of old. His ability to avoid guys rushing in. And his ability to almost make a big play it's a play action fake he's going to boot to his left he doesn't see what's going on over there because everybody's covered he turns back and he throws to his safety Val Hawkins get the ball down a little bit Zebby and that would have been a completion but his mobility I think is much improved tonight they're winning but those aren't winning numbers one for eight third and 11 for Lethridge throwback got a man out there it's complete to Williams and Ricky's inside the 30-yard line of the 27. Well, his second completion of the night was a huge play. One of the problems when you, when you play man-to-man -man is you end up isolating a linebacker that time, Dusty Renfro, on Ricky Williams. And here is Ricky Williams, and here's old Dusty Renfro in here, and Dusty's got to cover him. So Williams is going to run a wheel pattern up the sideline. Renfro doesn't see it. He gets fooled by the run fake, and Williams runs right past him. That's really a good scheme that time by Texas Tech. Hawkins to pull back, and he makes his way 
for seven, eight, maybe nine yards. Dusty Renfro made initial contact, but Hawkins kept his legs moving. By the way, a quick update on Octavius Bishop, the left tackle for Texas. He will be back. He just turned his ankle. You know, it's hard for linebackers to do everything. Dusty Renfro is a run stopper, and he's a zone-type linebacker. To put him isolated on a guy like Ricky Williams, I think is really, really tough because Ricky Williams runs a 4-5. Dusty runs about a 4-8 or a 4-9. Second and two, here comes Ricky Williams. There goes Ricky Williams. Four-yard line, first and goal, Texas Tech. Well, you got to admire the patience and the scheme of this Texas Tech offense. They're not putting up big numbers, but they're methodically plodding along. And I'll tell you, Williams just makes that on his own. There's a big hole there created by the offensive line. He sees it and gets down the field. He is a zigzag runner, according to his coach, Spike Dykes, that has a nose for the end zone and has improved dramatically since the first game of the year against Tennessee. Full back, touchdown, Jonathan Hawkins. Ricky Williams set it up. Hawkins with his first touchdown of the year. That is what you call a quick hitter. He walked into the end zone virtually untouched. And this guy in this offense is looking more and more like a Nebraska fullback scheme as this night goes on. And there's a bunch of happy guys on that Texas Tech sideline. Tony Rogers. Good snap, good hold. Tony Rogers down the middle. And Tech comes right back in response to the field goal with a touchdown. 24 to 10. They expand their lead in Austin. Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, very quiet right now, with the exception of the fans who made it east from Lubbock. The Red Raiders leading 24 to 10. Tony Rogers to kick it deep after a 63-yard touchdown drive. This will be Ellis at the 13. And Tony Ellis dives out to the 26-yard line. A return of 14. Jonathan Hawkins got it in the end zone for the Red Raiders, and he could have gone it backwards. Yeah. A huge hole. And all this was was just a belly wind back. It's going to get the ball on the left side of the offensive line and just go right up the field. It's zone blocking up front, led by big number 77, Eric Carruth, and there was no one there to touch him. And you know it's great blocking up front when the fullback, in a goal line situation, walks into the end zone untouched. Plenty of time for the University of Texas. They need to get it going offensively. 13.04 left in the fourth. The villain motion. Reverse handoff, Williams trying to get to the corner. Look at Ricky go now. He did most of that on his own. Out to the 47-yard line. A pickup of 21. That was a good old-fashioned sweep. It was an underneath handoff, and he's going to get some depth, and he's going to end up outrunning the defense. Jay Humphrey, number 67, does a great job in front of him getting a pancake block, but Ricky sees the hole and gets up the field and punishes a couple of tacklers. Good blocking, good scheme, and obviously a good run. Ricky Brown, Ricky Williams split. Quick set and a throw into a crowd is broken up incomplete. Cochran was there. Darwin Brown, number three, was there. They had Cavill sandwich. Not a good read. You know, and James Brown had better be careful because someone's going to pick one of those off. The defensive backs, in particularly the corners from Texas Tech, are getting a great jump on the football. And that was perfect that time by Darwin Brown. Now, what I think Texas should do is give a little hitch and go, let him bite on the hitch, and then run up the field. It'll be wide open. Williams departs. Blitz coming again. Brown over the middle, and he couldn't hook up. 
with his tight end Steve Bradley. So it'll bring up third down and 10. You know, Bradley was wide open. He ran an option route. They took Ricky Williams, and he ended up being a flanker back on that. But James Brown just missed the big fellow, Bradley. This is Cody McGuire, 276-pound senior from Crane, Texas, down on the turf. Well, Fox Sports News Primetime takes you one step beyond with in-depth interviews and analysis from around the nation. We are live on-site covering your home teams with up-to-the-minute scores and highlights. That's why at Fox Sports News Primetime only we can say we are there. Tonight after the game in most areas, check your local listings. You know, Cody McGuire down. He's from Crane. Texas and his uncle is Quail Dodge. You know who Quail Dodge is? I, I've met Quail Dodge. He's, he's maybe the foremost rodeo clown in the business. I know. That's great, man. I've never met him. I've heard of him, but I've never met him, and I think he's a funny guy. Well, you know, he's not only entertaining, but he serves a purpose. He saves cow the Cowboys' best friends, guys who ride bulls. Right. Their best friends are the rodeo clowns. Absolutely. And, and it's and a job I wouldn't want to have anything to do with. Right. You're, then you're smarter than I thought you were. Yes. Well, he hobbles off the field. McGuire, good hard-working football player. Looks like he might be back. Third down and 10 for Texas. They need the 44, the Red Raiders. Another blitz. What's new? Throw complete. First down yardage at Jamel Thompson. Good strike from James Brown. The good and the bad of blitzing. The good is you get there. The bad is you isolate your defensive backs in one-on-one -on -one coverage. And you get a big old guy like Thompson looking for a seam in the middle of the defense. It's hard to defend against. John Makovic brought that style of offense and that mentality of throwing slants against blitzes from his days at the Cowboys and the Kansas City Chiefs. Jamel Thompson, six catches tonight. He had six on the year coming in. First and 10, Texas. James Brown trying to run for his life. And he goes out of bounds, and the flag comes in. They'll call it a late hit, and they'll tack on 15 more. Keith Cockrum right on the sidelines, and that's one of those gray area calls. Well, not according to the officials. They're going to call a personal foul on it. And, Drew, to be honest with you, I agree with it. That was a gutsy call that time by John Makovic. It was a naked bootleg. You're going to see Brown fake to the top. He's going to put the ball on his hip. And get to the outside. He stops. It looks like his foot is out of bounds, and he gets caught. I think it's a good call by the officials. He clearly stops. He clearly goes out of bounds, but then he just gets whacked at the end by Cochran. That was a good call that time by the officials. And it's a little over rambunctious by Texas Tech. You know what? You agree with it up here in the booth. But when you were a defensive coordinator, you thought that was a good aggressive play. No, I always was friendly to the officials, as long as they were firm, fair, and consistent. I was very friendly to them. At least on the outside, I was. <laughs> From the 17, Brown end zone shot on the fade. Incomplete. David Aaron had the height advantage at 6'4 over the 6-foot Antoine Alexander. Well, that's the guy you want to throw the face to, the big guy, so he can go up and rebound against the defensive back and come down with the football. And as you said, Alexander's only six foot, but you're going to see the big guy, Aaron, go up, try to get it. Now, if James just could have put the ball a little bit more into the corner, get a little bit more loft on that, it probably would have been a touchdown. But that was the correct call, and they threw it to the right person. Ricky Williams. Nowhere to go. He was stopped in the middle of that defensive line by Kyle Shipley, the middle linebacker, and also Chris Kachurik, defensive tackle. John Makovic's got a tough call here because you want to score a touchdown. You're in field goal range. It's third and nine. You can't run the ball well. Texas Tech is probably going to blitz you. I look for a screen here. I don't think Texas has run enough screens tonight. They wanted to run screens in this game. They only had the one tight end screen. I'll bet you it's a screen here, Drew. Third and nine. And the receiver fell down. He got knocked down 
Interference is coming. Jamel Thompson, the intended target. Antoine Alexander, number 30, the possible guilty party on that. That was going to be a slant that time. Again, when you're blitzing and you're playing man, there's an area in the middle of the field that's vacated. That pass actually was into a crowd. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul, automatic first down. You're going to see Brown here drop back. It's a slant pattern to the outside. He looks, he delivers the ball, and you can't really see it all, but it was clearly pass interference because Alexander trips up the receiver before the ball gets there. So that was a proper call again by the officials. Big break for Texas. They have it first and 10 at the 11. Too tight formation. Ricky Williams, the long setback. Brown, slant from the outside is complete for about five yards to Kwame Cavill. His sixth catch of the game, and he had only six catches coming in. Right, and he's the go-to guy tonight, obviously. He was the go-to guy in practice the other day, and they're following through with it right now. But it's another blitz this time by Texas Tech. They are relentless in their blitzing and their blitzing mentality. Good job, though, by Brown of fishing the ball off the safe throw. Williams on a counter. He cannot shed tackles there. Monte Rager, a short tackler, and one of the keys for Texas Tech, they felt coming in, not only to gang tackle, but to make sure they wrapped up number 11. Well, you got to wrap them up, but when you got guys flying around like Monte Rager, it's hard. That time they run a counter play into that nine-man front that I talked about at halftime. There is nowhere to go. There are too many defenders at the point of attack, even though the offense tries to get two extra blockers. That is a win in the numbers game by the defense on that. Ty Ardwan is the player on one knee for Texas Tech. The junior from Beaumont. Outside linebacker, 200 pounds. John Makovic, it's a huge play here. Third down and seven, and down by 14 with 10.31 to go. Is this four down territory or no? Absolutely, I think you gotta try to get a touchdown down here and you know make something happen. And here's a guy that's trying to make something happen, happen in John Makovic. You know, when you start getting rumors, Drew, about your job and your future, that thing takes on a life of its own. And it's very hard for this man, his family, his entire staff, and their families to squelch those rumors and just focus on football. But I think he has done a marvelous job because he is not, he is not a guy that should be fired here at the University of Texas. They should keep this man as the head football coach. Well, he's won every place he's been. Wake Forest, Illinois. Did a good job with the Kansas City Chiefs, and he's done a fine job here. Third down and six. Brown. Toward the end zone. Intercepted. Dane Johnson. Another huge play. JB did well to get out of trouble, and then he forced the issue. You know, it's the second time, Drew, tonight, James trying to make a big play, and it ends up being a turnover. It's what we talked about coming into the game tonight. They had 28 turnovers. He looks downfield, he reverses his field, but take the football now and go make some positive yardage. When you stop and try to throw the football back across the grain, you're going to throw it to the wrong guy. And that time, Dane Johnson saw him the whole time, and he threw the ball right to him. Second interception on the year for Johnson. You're looking for players of the game. That ball came out, but came out late. Dane Johnson would be a leading candidate, I think, right now. Ricky Williams picks up a few. And our Burger King game summary. Texas, if you remember, led at the half. But uh, it's been all Texas Tech in the second half. It began with a 95-yard kickoff return from Dane Johnson. And Ricky Williams of Texas Tech has outrushed 
the more famous Ricky Williams of Texas. And, you know, James Brown's got good numbers in 297 yards passing, but the two interceptions and just a couple of poor decisions, I think will say that he hasn't played as well as maybe he should have or John McEvick expected him to. Ricky Williams stopped about a yard short of a first down. Cedric Woodard made the tackle. And there's Bobby Jack Wright, Drew, who's the defensive coordinator here at Texas, and he has been much maligned. Right now, coming into the game, this defense was ranked 94th in the country, giving up over 400 yards a game, and 101st in the country in scoring defense, giving up almost 36 points a game. What has been the problem with the Texas defense? Well, I think they've had a couple of problems. You know, when you lose and you play poorly, it's never one thing. But number one, they're young. Number two, they've been injured. And this will be very close, Artie. They gave it to Jonathan Hawkins. Woodard again got penetration. They needed a yard. And, you know, going back to the defense from Texas, the third thing is they don't have great team speed. And that's one of the things that they've got to correct in recruiting. Short. They're not even going to measure. Texas Tech is short. And that time, well, now maybe they are going to measure. I'm going to say that time Texas uh, rose up when they needed to get a three and out. And... Uh, may have done so you know when, when you're playing poorly it's like the rumors are about John Makovic it kind of takes on a life of its own and the players don't believe in what you're doing anymore so I think coach Wright is doing the correct thing in trying to be aggressive in his play calling and blitz a little bit more he blitzed 27 times last week against Baylor but that's what you have to do you got to try to make something happen I think, though, they've got to sit down at the end of this year and reevaluate the scheme and the athletes that they have here because this man's a smart coach. Bobby Jack Wright is a good coach. They will be able to figure it out and get this defense back to the prominence it was earlier in the 90s. Jeremy Hernandez on the punt. Texas should get good field position. Brian White at his own 42. Trying to take as much time off the game clock as possible. Low snap. And the punt is a short one. Fair catch at the 45-yard line by White. So Texas with 8.06 to play, down by 14. Four to ten, Texas Tech leading Texas in Austin with Greg Bell and Artie Gigantino. I'm Drew Goodman, and with 8:06 to play, Texas has the ball at their own 44-yard line, and they're running out of time. They need to punch it in the end zone if they're to have a chance to come back and win this ball game. And the one thing they can't do, though, they can't panic. I think they're going to try to run the ball a couple times, and maybe it's time, Drew, for a trick play. They have a throwback in this week. From Ricky Williams to James Brown. We'll see if they run it. There's Ricky Williams out of the backfield. He has it at the 49-yard line. A pickup of seven. Ricky Williams' first catch of the night. Let's pay a visit to Greg Bell. Greg? Well, injury update for you. Corey McGuire came out. That's number 74, the big nose tackle for Texas Cup. Came out the last series. Had his knee retaped. He's been injured part, most of the season. And they said he should be able to get back in, and Oscar Solis just had the win knocked out of him. All right, Greg, thank you. Browns now over 300 yards passing tonight. And that's a heck of a strike, but it comes out. It was a heck of a hit, too. Keith Cockrum delivered the blow, and I think Ricky Williams is at the bottom of the pile with the football. That was one heck of a hit out of the secondary, and that football was jarred loose. Big time jarred loose. You're going to see it here now. It's going to come over the middle. It's going to get the ball inside. Catches it, goes up, and just gets whacked. And I'll tell you, Drew, that is either an incomplete pass or a fumble in my mind. I think they called it a fumble, and Williams recovered it. Mel Thompson.
and seventh catch of the night, though he didn't hold it for very long. No, he didn't. I'm not sure anybody would have. Brown. And the catch made by Cavill. The Texas Tech sideline wanted interference. A flag did come in. James Brown is on the turf, slow to get up. And you know, there was a flag thrown in the backfield that time, and it's either unnecessary roughness on the quarterback or holding against Texas because of where it was thrown. And we'll take a look at it here. But you see James Brown go back, he's gonna take the football, he's gonna deliver the football up the field, and then he just gets whacked. And I think that might be a late hit. Because he is in pain. James is still down on the field. There's Richard Walton, who has thrown 57 passes this year. Three interceptions, though, unfortunately for him, and, and only one touchdown, which isn't a good ratio. But you know what, Drew? He is a big man, 6'5", about 230, and he looks like an NFL quarterback. At least in size, he does. And that's what I'm talking about. There were two flags guys. on the play. Roughing the quarterback, defensive pass interference. The ball was received, so we'll take tack on 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Well, two no-nos on Texas Tech. Richard Walton will have to come in the football game, however. And James Brown is enjoying his best day of the year throwing the football. You know, and as we talked about, this ends up being roughing the passer. And Brown takes the football, he throws it, and the defender comes two steps later. Big old Rucker comes in there and tackles him. That was roughing the passer. Again, the accurate call by the officials. And James Brown's moving around pretty good. That's a great sign. So the ball is moved to the 12-yard line. First and 10 for Texas. 7.06 to go in the fourth quarter. The Red Raiders by 14. Keep in mind, Texas at 3 and 5, if they win out, would be bowl eligible at 6 and 5. They have Kansas and on the road against Texas A&M to follow tonight. Walt, pressure coming, lost the ball. And now another flag. The Red Raiders have it. If the penalty is against Texas, it'll be Red Raider football. Monte Rager got in there. Holding on the offense. The penalty is declined. First down, Texas Tech. When John Makovic looks back on this 97 season, his first thought is going to be turnovers. Well, what happens? Again, the holding doesn't work that time. They're blitzing again. The Red Raider defense just blitzes. And Monty Rager, number 34, just beats his man coming off the corner. That was a picture-perfect defensive end move up the field. He tackles him high, and he strips the ball. But it's the right call by the Texas Tech defense because you blitz new quarterbacks when they come into the game. Debbie left after Jimmy Leverage, excuse me, gets to Williams. And Williams is stuffed by Brandon Nava, who's all fired up. Minus 19 on the year in turnover ratio for Texas. That was 111 coming into the ball game out of 112 Division 1A schools. You can't win, and there's a guy who likes to win, though, Brandon Nava. And his coaches and his teammates, Drew, have voted him the craziest guy on the team, the most fired up guy on the team. But I'm sure, I'm sure he's disappointed in what's happening here tonight. But he plays hard for that guy. Well, Nava, the defense now. Now, need a takeaway of their own. No question about it. That's one of the areas that they haven't been very good. They've only got 13 takeaways this year coming into the game. Williams gets a call, and he was stood up by Sean Rogers. So it'll bring up third down, and about a dozen to go. Clock moving inside 540 to play, and Debbie Lethridge, the veteran quarterback, will use all of the 25-second play clock before he snaps the ball, but right now we're going to have to wait because another player down on the field. And I believe that's Michael Bodwin. A reminder, next week on College Football Saturday, the Houston Cougars will battle the Red Hot team from 
Southern Miss, then Texas A&M will visit Norman, Oklahoma to play the Sooners. We'll be there for that one. And then Cal and Arizona. That's all next Saturday on Fox Sport Nets College Football Saturday. You know, Michael Baldwin was an ex-outside linebacker, and in this new scheme this year, they moved him to defensive end. He's a small defensive end, though. 6'2", 238 pounds. He's kind of a tweener, Drew, between an outside backer and a defensive end. But he is mobile, he does run around, and the coaches really like him. In fact, last week was his first start because of injuries against Baylor. We'll take a look here and see how it happened. He's up inside, and there he is, number 93, and it looks like his right ankle right there gets twisted underneath. Hopefully it's not too serious. Boy, a body like that was not meant to bend like that. I don't think any bodies were meant to bend. Well, maybe there's a few gymnasts <laughs> out there that could pull that one yeah, off. Yeah, but this guy doesn't look like a gymnast at 240 no. pounds, believe me. I don't want to see him in a leotard either. But, you know, this is what happened. There's been some injuries here in the fourth quarter, but it's been the result of two football teams playing their guts out and playing hard. You know what's interesting about this game? Texas has 18 more snaps and approximately 170 more yards of offense, yet they trail by two touchdowns. And coming into the game, you know, Leftridge. possession was a problem. Yeah, Leftridge calls a timeout. So Tech will talk about this play leading 24 to 10. Twenty-four to ten, Texas Tech leads all time. They have just four wins in Austin. John Makovic's club, uphill climb. Well, Sunday on Fox Sports Net, Tiger Woods Mania goes global with the Tiger Woods Invitational from Japan. Tiger heads a competitive field that also features Marco Mira and Nick Price. That's the Tiger Woods Invitational from Japan tomorrow on Fox Sports Net third down and 13 for Texas Tech with 520 to play the ball at their own 15 yard line they need the 28 do you throw it or stay conservative I think you throw it because it looks like Texas is going to blitz him and it looks like he's audible at the line of scrimmage because he recognizes the blitz you can see he's pointing out to his wide receivers McKenzie has it and he has a first down great call Artie 39-yard line, a fresh set of downs for the Red Raiders, and that may do it for Texas Tech. You know, one of the things when you're blitzing, you got to disguise it a little bit, and Texas does not disguise it that time, and it's just a simple three-step drop and an audible to Malcolm McKenzie. And Zebby knows it, and he says, yeah, that's the way to do it, and he gets into the couple defenders' faces. But then he says, hey, I'm sorry, Brandon. Don't, don't, don't take it out on me. Three of ten throwing for Zebby uh, Leverage tonight, but I'd say he's made the most of his three completions. Yeah, absolutely, and at the right times. And here you're going to see Texas blitz again. They got to start tackling the football. Hawkins for a couple up the middle. Here's a guy that had 19 carries coming into the football game, and he's in double figures carrying the ball tonight. And he had no chance that time because they ran the fullback belly up inside into an inside blitz. So there was nowhere to go. But I'm sure, I'm sure Texas Tech felt they might catch him in a blitz and maybe pop it. Now, does that look like a fullback helmet, all the stick marks? Oh, you, you got to love it. You got to put a few more on, you know, a little bit of dirt, scruff marks, and, God, that's great stuff. Second and eight, Ricky Williams. He'll have a first down at midfield. And Texas Tech starting to put a close on this one. You know, that was just a simple misdirection play where the fullback is going to go one side to the left. He's going to turn around and hand the ball off to Ricky Williams on the other side. And like all good running backs, he's got his momentum. He's into his rhythm. He's into his running zone right now. And that guy is going to continue to hand him the football because he is making big-time yardage. And who would have thought that the little Ricky Williams from Texas Tech would outgun the big Ricky Williams from Texas? Hawkins, not much there. 130 yards for Ricky Williams from Texas Tech unofficially. 77 yards for the Heisman Trophy candidate who uh, obviously won't gain 200 for the fifth consecutive time and won't join Marcus Allen 
and Barry Sanders. And you got to credit that guy right there. Zebby Leftwich he is engineering this football team up and down the field. And he's gotten a few big boos in the last couple weeks at home in Lubbock, but he's responded nicely. Second down and nine. The ball snapped. There'll be less than 310 to play. Hawkins dropped by Dusty Renfro. And we remind you that the executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer of College Football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Tonight's game has been produced by Robert Steinfeld and directed very ably by Ken Fouts. And our head of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. 24 to 10 here. A check of the scoreboard from the Big 12 today. Colorado down 28 to 10 at one point. Comes from behind and wins. Oklahoma State, they're 7 and 2. They beat up the Sooners today. Texas A&M, they roll along 38-10 over Baylor. Kansas State is 8-1. They had three special team touchdowns in the game. That's, That's an amazing statistic for that to happen. That's, That's just great uh, stuff. That is remarkable. Nebraska scored on the last play of the game in regulation to tie Missouri and then one in overtime. Scott Frost responsible for five touchdowns today in the north. Nebraska, the number one team in the land, moves to 9-0. and oh. Kansas State at 7-1. Then Missouri, they're having a terrific year under Larry Smith. They're 6-4. Kansas at 5-4. Colorado at 5-4. And in the south, Oklahoma State, Texas A&M, 4-2, 7-2. And the Red Raiders will improve to 5-4, and four, and they will keep pace, though they can't go to the championship game of the Big 12. They're in a three-way tie for first. Third down and nine. Ricky Williams sweeping, and Brandon Nava grabs him by the shoulder pads and tosses him down. Let's check in again with Greg Bell. Greg? Well, in that last series, Michael Bolden, num number 93 for Texas, came out. They're not quite sure what the injury is right now. The knee's intact. He's going to walk it off and see if he can get back in. And already, you know, for uh, Mr. Williams on the other side for Texas Tech, he's having a great night tonight. And I can tell you, he loves getting a little bit more yards than the, the more famous Ricky Williams on the other side of the field. And you can remember when I was with the Rams, already. I hated when I didn't get 100 yards. So you know Ricky Williams on this side of the field is a little disappointed tonight. Yeah, you always have your own individual battles within the game and there's no question about that tonight is a big feather in ricky williams's hat from texas tech in fact yesterday robert steinfeld and i our producer were at the front desk getting something run off and the young man who made the copies for us told mr steinfeld hey you've got ricky williams on the wrong sheet of paper you've got him on the texas tech side and bob said to the guy hey there's two ricky williams playing in this game and i thought that was so ironic in terms of what's happened here tonight well there are 76,000 fans here when the game began and if they were unsure that there was another ricky williams at the start of the night they know now you know when a freshman comes in and does well like this young man has it means he's a mature young guy that has a sight on exactly what he wants to accomplish and that's what he did he wanted to come to a school where he could start immediately and he felt he could do that at texas tech he moved up there in the summer worked out with the team got himself familiar with everything and now he's the starter jeremy hernandez will punt Ryan White won't get a chance to return it. It goes out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Texas needs two touchdowns in the space of two minutes, 47 seconds. And let's see if it's James Brown back in the offensive huddle for the University of Texas. It will be. Well, the heat drew will increase on John McAvick down here. There will be a lot of calmness. There will be a lot of people calling for his head after this loss tonight, if indeed they do end up losing. Well, to be fair, if you look at who they lost to graduation, six players in the NFL, and all of the injuries, I don't think you can put all of the blame for this season at the feet of that man. No, he's yeah. a tremendous football coach. And you know what I would do if I were John McAvick? Even if they lose the next three games and end the season, he just got to sit down and reevaluate this program from A to Z. If he's got to make a couple staff changes, you do it. But then just rethink 
everything you're doing in the program and give it a new five-year start. Tried to get it to Cavill on an up route. He broke the route off. It'll be third down and three with 218 left. And there you see James Brown talking to one of the receivers and saying, hey, I either threw it to the wrong spot or you ran the wrong pattern. And again, it goes back to that miscommunication with the receivers and the quarterback that's played Texas all year. Third and three. Blitz coming, Brown gets it away underneath. It is caught by Jeffrey Clayton. And he got to the sideline to stop the clock. Kyle Shipley pursued him there. Two touchdown lead for the Red Raiders. Well, there's somebody getting carted off, and we're having a hard time determining what his number is, and we'll let you know when we know. Not the way you want to go to the locker room. No, no, and I hope he's okay. Brown, another underneath throw. And are they going to give the catch to Jeremy Jones? Yes. You know, James has lost some of the velocity that he had earlier in the day. He's not throwing the ball with authority and velocity. And as you can see here, they got to get the ball outside and out of bounds because they have no timeouts remaining. Let me correct that. They called it incomplete, so it's second and ten. A reminder, Fox Sports News will immediately follow the conclusion of this game. 156 left. Texas needing a small miracle. And on the crossing route, Jeremy Jones this time definitely caught the football. You know, he shows up. Yard line. He, excuse me, Drew, he shows up. He's a good little football player when they give him the ball and they get the ball to him. Texas quickly to the line of scrimmage, slot to the top. Five coming for the Red Raiders. They never play a prevent. Nearly picked off by Ty Ardwan. So I guess Ty's all right. He was down on the field earlier. Ty's all right. He's all over the field right now. But he's also mad at himself for dropping that. One of the things you don't want to ever do as a defensive player is drop a gimme interception when the ball hits you right in the hands or hits you right in the stomach. You know, it's a misleading stat, throwing for 300 yards. How many times do you see that stat and it often accompanies a loss? It still comes down to turnovers and the ability to run the football and stop the run. Brown, this is Jared Coleman, senior from Fort Worth. That is the ninth receiver to catch a ball for the University of Texas tonight. Eric Butler made the tackle. 1.23 to go, clock moving. Texas uh, needs to move it further down the field. The Red Raiders will give them all those underneath throws in the final minute. And this one through the hands of Courtney Epps. Darwin Brown had the coverage. And it is fourth down and four for the University of Texas. Now, I'm surprised they're not trying to throw the ball a little bit more down the field. And as you accurately pointed out, you know, it's hard because they're playing a little bit more zone now for Texas Tech. But I still think you got to try to take the shot down the field and make a quick score, get the onside kick, and give yourself a chance. Throw it up the field. Fourth and four for the Longhorns. And it looks like a false start. Probably be fourth and nine. Not just Texas struggling this year. False start on the offense. He had a five-yard penalty, and it remains fourth down. Perennial powers like Colorado, they've had four losses this year how about Alabama they were shut out today Miami is down USC Notre Dame I mean the, the landscape of college football has changed you have you have fewer scholarships less time to work with the players the only thing that hasn't changed are the expectations and some of the pressure put on the coaches the landscape of college football has changed dramatically, but the expectations have not. Not at all. 
110 left, fourth down and nine for the Horns. Another blitz from the Red Raiders. Is the catch made? Oh, what a grab by Ricky Williams. Well, despite it not being the kind of night Ricky Williams wanted for the team or for himself, here's a display of just how talented he is in all facets of the game. Well, they split him out in the slot that time, and what he does, he runs like a skinny post. Great reaction that time by James Brown, but it shows you what kind of competitor Ricky Williams is. Brown guns it, knocked down. His receiver fell, David Aaron. 52 seconds left. Can't say enough about James Brown. And here's a guy that has heard some boos this year. And you talk about uh, short memories. 24 wins in his career at Texas. Four shy of the all-time mark for a quarterback. He's won a number of big games. Goes back to his uh, freshman year against Oklahoma when he came off the bench. Well, coaches and quarterbacks get probably too much credit and certainly too much blame when things don't go well. Brown out cut, Epps with the catch at the 11-yard line. They're going to have to hustle. Ball stayed inbounds. I mean, you never know. Throw a touchdown pass here, kick the extra point, get the onside kick, throw a Hail Mary pass. Texas has still got a chance. They just got to hurry up. They have no timeouts left. Brown trying to get away from Rager. And a flag was thrown as the ball was broken up out of bounds. Well, there's another guy that's competing his heart out on every play, Monte Rago. He just came underneath that time and put the heat on James Brown. And he's just a junior. He'll be back. Texas Tech next week. Offside on the defense. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remain third down. There's Rager. They will head to Stillwater to battle Oklahoma State. That should be an interesting football game. Yeah, and if that guy plays the way he has played, they'll do very well. This guy should be an All-American on some teams this year and some next year. James Brown, you're a stat man. Tim Simmons, our stat man, just informed us he's three yards shy of 400 yards passing. With just 10 points on the board. Give it to Williams, and he'll get it to the three-yard line, and they might not get off another snap unless they really move it. But what they've got to do, they got to hurry. you got to show a sense of urgency. Now, Texas Tech was... Uh, taking their time on piling. Well, that's what you're supposed to do there. Stay on top of the guy with the ball. Brown spikes it with six seconds left. Actually, they're going to say four seconds left, so we'll have one more snap. And, Coach, you ever heard of a 14-point play? Well, no, I don't think so. So it doesn't look very good here for Texas, and Texas Tech is going to win the game. And I don't know. It's... They, they came in and they played their hearts out, but I thought the University of Texas also did a good job tonight because they played extremely hard and better on defense than they have. Final snap in all probability. They lob toward the end zone, and the pass is broken up, and that is that. 24-10. The Red Raiders have come to Austin. And knocked off the Longhorns. We'll come back and have a final thought for you as John Makovic meets his good friend at midfield, Spike Dykes.